And we are back. Uh, the halftime break is over. Colin, what did you think of the halftime show? I thought the halftime show was great, man. Like that moment that Hideo Kojima came up on stage mm-hmm. and uh, performed that Hatsune Miku song was just fantastic. Um, there was a lot of debate about whether or not he could do it and like hit the high notes, but I always had faith in Kojima. I you always have to have faith in Kojima. I, I don't know and, why that was ever a discussion. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously a lot of people were kind of nervous about his musical performance, but, you know, one of the major uh, parts of the halftime show was, of course, the new trailer uh, for Death Stranding. Yeah, and that that was really just kind of, you know, the, the thing people talked about a little bit at the end, but, of course, the main thing was Kojima's performance, but I guess we yeah. could talk about Death Stranding. Uh, apparently it's out November 8th. <laughs> Did you know it's that? It's coming out this year, 2019. Uh, oh, my gosh. We're in it. Who'd have thought? The Stranding has died. Tomorrow is in your hands, Curtis. Tomorrow is in your hands. Uh, so, Colin, we're back. Uh, this is part two of our lead-up into E3 2019. Uh, so there's a couple little tidbits we're going to cover before we get into the back half of the press conference lineup. Um, if you remember, last last week uh, we covered uh, EA, Microsoft, and Bethesda. Uh, so today we'll be covering Ubisoft Square Enix and Nintendo, um, but before that, Colin, th- this week, um, a lot of news and like rumblings of news happening this week as we we lead into E3. Uh, a, a lot of time is an enigma. A lot of it's kind of just been like it's just a it's just a smoothie in my head right now. <laughs> it's all blended together. Um, but some of the things is really quickly just a rapid fire off the top of my head. We. We learned this week that Xbox Game Pass is coming to PC, um, so we'll learn more about that in less than a week. Yep. Um, I think Phil Spencer was out there saying, hey, we got 14 first-party games to show at E3, yeah. so that's exciting. It's something we were talking about last week. Um, I don't even know if it was last week, but Square Enix confirmed that the Avengers Project will be present at E3. There's been some leaks about that. I don't know if you've seen some of the, like summary descriptions about what that game is i have not um, floating around okay hmm. well i can you know we can talk about it or we can just save it um i won't spoil it if you don't want to be spoiled um there's not a lot out there but it's enough to kind of connect the dots um and there was uh, rumors from jason schreier that the last of us part two which recently had been rumored might be out this november um it sounds like that might be an early 2020 game i kind of wouldn't be surprised if we get a trailer for that this week yeah, that was kind of a um, speculation as well. Uh, there's been talk about Cyberpunk um, aiming for a 2019 release, but most likely being 2020. But uh, we do have two pretty, I, I think the two standout um, reveals and release date like announcements are, of course, uh, one that we alluded to a few moments ago with Death Stranding. And we also got the formal reveal of Call of Duty Modern Warfare the first one yeah the first the first yeah call of duty modern warfare yeah you know that that one yeah so Uh, people have made all the all the jokes that you can about that but let's talk about (laughs) let's talk about the thing that's most exciting to me um when i got home and loaded up the trailer for death stranding i saw the eight minute run run time and just started losing my mind Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) So did you watch any, did you end up seeing any of the Twitch stream like the day before? No, I did not. Okay. So it's, it's like, you know, it was like a teaser Twitch stream. Like you remember, um, there was like a last of us two trailer that was out at some point and they mm-hmm. just like live streamed like a burning car for yeah, like a while. It was like a tease was, that was, it like reminded that. me a lot of the fallout 76 stuff from last year. Yeah. It, it was essentially that. And it was like hands and stuff like handprints, like covering up maybe like certain parts of the trailers. And there was like little whispers in the background. You're trying to figure out what it was. And then they knew it like whatever it was like 11 o'clock, whatever time. I don't remember which specific time, but like it was going to reveal the trailer. Um, and I'm, I'm glad it was eight minutes. It was like eight minutes, 20 or 40 seconds, something like that. And, where do you even start with that? Um... So where to start? Okay, so where to start? Uh, Death Stranding, of course, Colin. I think you and I have been... I think it's safe to say you and I are in the same boat here that we are just, like, just chomping at the bit to, like, figure out what the heck this game is. Um, 
do we Which still know exciting. do we still know what this I, is i feel like i feel like this trailer actually i know it's i know it's easy to like make the jokes of like oh my god kojima you madman like what even is this like but honestly like if you look at this trailer and kind of pick it apart i think i think you could start to connect the dots on like what's going on um i think so. i think especially when like the stuff where it's i don't even know i don't know how they're gonna phrase it um the the like alternate world like the this idea of like death is not an end or like mm-hmm. you you were i guess transported to this other timeline or something maybe to the past uh i think there's an allu- allusions to like war causing whatever the yeah. current state of the world is yeah um and so this idea of like uh what are, um i'm blanking on the phrasing like the uh the connection between the two um the the strands if you will mm-hmm. uh, they, they called it like, like the cables or something the cable point, yeah there uh, was something there was a there's a phrasing that they were using a lot this week and i'm blanking on it right now um but like that connection mm-hmm. and how like the asynchronous multiplayer will work how people will be able to like make the bridge those connection connections like the main character i think his last name is bridges but there seems yeah. to be like a corporation or something known as bridges yeah. so i think that's pretty like clearly an allusion to this idea of these two worlds being connected through a bridge uh, of some sort um it seemed like I, I wonder what the uh, the makeup of the game will be between the two. I wonder if it'll be like pretty evenly split, or if you'll spend most of your time in, I guess, the present. We'll call it right now, um, just for lack of a better term. Like, I'm super into this idea. Of this, I, I guess, post apocalypse. I don't. I don't know. It's. It seems. It seems different enough from a lot of the other like post apocalyptic worlds we've seen. It. It almost seems like. Um, the apocalypse is like happening like it's happening as yeah. the game is going so it's not like post or maybe pre i guess but it seems like it's, yeah, they're trying um, to prevent it from happening or something and this idea yeah of like traversing these potentially dangerous environments there seems to be uh like looters or other things to be to be concerned about there's the what we now know are the bts um which from what we've seen in the past seem to be these like monstrous ghost-like i I even shades of um like lovecraft in the like vibes from them Mm -hmm. um these kind of otherworldly like horrors i guess that you also have to be mindful of um and the the japanese trailer that they put out there's like a clip of what appears to be a boss fight with one of these things where it's like hands like connected to each other and it's like sprouting about and it looks kind of insane yeah um i yeah i was kind of floored by this trailer to be honest um it felt if like kojima has been known for a while of having just like trailers that just don't end Mm -hmm. um and this is the first trailer in a long time that i like i've seen and i'm just like as you're approaching the end it's just like i i don't want it to end just keep going yeah (laughs) like don't don't stop please yeah so, it, you know, it just feels so weird. Like, you see Kojima on Twitter all the time. He's always tweeting about food. And he's always, mm-hmm. like, visiting these places. And he's always, like, meeting with people. And you just think, like, he's just not even working on this. Thing. You know what I mean? It's just, like, he's just <laughs> on vacation, like, 24-7. Just living the life. So when it's, like, they show something like this in detail, it's just, like, kind of, like, mind-boggling a mm-hmm. little bit. Um, and... In- you gotta like you gotta you know props to the decima engine yeah right like that I, thing's putting in work i think uh especially his motorcycle like when he's uh, like the shock mm-hmm. absorbers are happening uh it looked like a lot like kind of the mechanical beasts in uh like horizon like you can kind of see some of did that you tech, see very similar. um in the trailer i'm tr- uh i'm blanking on the name it was is it yoji shinkawa he's the um, art director there was like a yeah i think it was like his name and it was like art director and mechanical design or something like that oh um, yeah that jumped out to me um i don't know if mechanical design it was like robot design or something something to that effect and that like jumped out as like a oh <laughs> wait yeah um because that seems like a very overtly metal gear 
kind of thing. I mean, this 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 looks like Metal Gear, really. Like it, yeah, just the yeah. the trailer, the look of it, the even just Norman Reedus running around the battlefield, that kind of stuff. Um, it's just I so. I wouldn't be surprised wacky. if it controlled. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it controlled similarly to, yeah. to Metal Gear Five Solid Five. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, and, it looks like it does. Yeah, uh, and like even just traversing like a bigger open world, specifically him taking the ladder out, and like you can just put that ladder like anywhere probably, um, and just That's climb up cool. all these. I, yeah, it's like wait a minute, why didn't anybody else think of this? Like, why doesn't Breath like, of the Wild have we, a giant ladder you can just right? Put like, down? well, we've only seen the ladder, but I'm hoping it actually. Well, it's funny you bring up Breath of the Wild because I remember. When I played that game, one of the early things I did was chop down a tree. The tree fell perfectly so that it was like it created a bridge across like a cavern, mm, right? Or not a cavern, like a ravine or something. Right? I've seen stuff and, like that. that was this. That was a super cool moment for me of realizing, oh, this is what this game is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the ladder is kind of echoes of that. Yeah. And so I would love for there to be more things like that that we just haven't seen yet. Yeah. Um, they also had this pole that he was like shoving into the ground that he can basically use as a repelling or climbing up kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just yeah, I'm, I'm kind of rewatching the trailer just in the background right now. We got we got homo demons. Um, you remember <laughs> that? Like I, I think it's so great to watch this trailer with uh, like closed captioning on because you learn like just so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, we got Die Hard Man. We got the we got yeah. the cast. Some of these names are are just, mm. yeah, They're just so good. Uh, yeah, I like the name like fragile. Like that's a good name, um, for the Leah Sedu character. I think that's her name. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's. I'm kind of. We also we have a uh, Cliff is Mads Mikkelsen. Um, who else we got here? Uh, Mama, which sounds like Big Mama. Uh, Guillermo mm-hmm. del Toro is Dead Man. There's another yeah. guy who's Heart Man, then Die yep. Hard Man. Troy Baker <laughs> is Higgs. I think it looks really good. Yep. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, character and mechanical design by Yoji Shinkawa. That's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. I, yeah. That jumped out to me. It's like, hmm, all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what kind of weird stuff is going to happen here? And there's a part where um, Norman Reedus is blue and then yeah. really goes into Metal Gear Solid 4 where he's putting a gun to his head. Yeah. And... Yeah, this is um, I. So this is this is just me, and I'm just thinking like timeline specifically. I mm-hmm. don't know if I see this game being more than eight hours. Do you? Like, mm. I feel like yeah, this is know. coming out so quick because even it's coming out quick, but they had an engine to start with. It wasn't like they were building their own engine. Sure, that's true. Um, and so they were able to start. I don't know how much... I, I'm assuming they had to start from scratch as far as, like, they, we have their engine, that's it. Like, they probably don't have Metal Gear assets that they can they can work with. Or yeah, code, and I'm sure Gorilla. I'm sure Gorilla helped but, out a ton on this. But it is, it, it is a game that looks like it controls pretty similarly to NGS5. And it is, I'm, from what we understand, it sounds like there's a good amount of crossover in developers. So maybe it was easier to get a little, a little faster... Mm-hmm. Um, when did this like when are like I'm trying to remember was it was it late 2015 that they announced the partnership with Kojima? Yeah, because it, it was um, yeah I think it was cause late like, 2015 because that was the I rumor that in, it was supposed to be at PSX and it wasn't. Yeah, I guess in theory, you know, you could see this have being in development for like three and a half, maybe a little under four years. And I was thinking about it too. That probably three and a half. Kojima probably was already drawing this stuff up because it was like a yeah. year before the fallout happened with Konami before yeah. Phantom Pain even came out. So he's probably been drawing some of this stuff up for a while. And who knows what is, kind of PT ideas went into this? You know, I, I don't it, know. For sure. For sure. It is fast and it does seem like, oh, wow, this is like, I would have thought you know the last of us or ghost of tsushima might have come out before this but Mm -hmm. at the same time like i think i I could see how they're like with an engine to start with 
with maybe like this idea of have, having been kicked around for a bit now like i could see how this would come out i guess faster than we would expect um i don't know i could still see it being lengthy i i, I could see it being like a pretty big open world but maybe not a lot to do in it if mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah. um it's hard to tell how big it is because like the clips we've seen it seems pretty open um but i don't think we've had like a lot of like just straight up them saying this is how big the map is right which i i would assume that you know we'll probably start getting stuff like that in the next few months um but up until this trailer really like i mean last year we did see some gameplay but it was pretty light like this is definitely the most extensive like just full-on footage that we've seen Mm -hmm. um and it starts i i think it starts to paint a pretty clear picture of like what this game is going to be with still a lot of questions in the air but yeah i don't know i guess i don't know i would expect at least story-wise i'd still expect the story to be at least at least 20 hours i'd hope i were to guess yeah Uh, i am hoping and this trailer is giving me hope i'm i'm hoping this is a return to like a more story centric um kojima game yeah where there's just more cutscenes, more like more things happening yeah um yeah yeah because i think about that you know even metal gear one two and three i never really think of those games like for being great gameplay like the gameplay is you know good it's serviceable but it's the cutscenes, the codec conversations that kind of stuff and you can tell certainly with five that they really focused on mm-hmm. the gameplay aspect and really just kind of right threw in these cassette tapes like I understand, you know, the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, there's so many codec conversations that reveal the plot, but Mm -hmm. after beating Chapter 51 or whatever in Metal Gear Solid 5, you feel like you don't have the full story, and then you have to go listen to an hour and a half of cassette tapes to get the rest of it. Uh, It Mm -hmm. just didn't didn't feel great, so I I think this is going to be... I would assume, especially with, like, the combat, like, it didn't seem, like, all that in-depth. Like, he's, like, swinging, like, a yeah. suitcase around at him. It, it doesn't seem... <laughs> and one thing I also noticed is, and again, it's still early, but, you know, I guess the game still has five months. Like, there's no, like, UI, like, when Norman Reedus is, like, running around yeah. the world. Like, you can open a menu, but, like, there's no, like, here's what your health is. Here's your gun ammo. Yeah. If you don't have it equipped and stuff. So, I, I like that. And the the one last thing I guess I'll, I'll say on it... um that is like super exciting to me is this trailer at the very least it does seem to paint a picture of like a world with a lot of lore to it and a lot of just like depth as far as like what is actually happening um Mm -hmm. i would not be surprised if this is a franchise in the making or if they want it to be so Um, my my brother is a big metal gear fan uh with me as well and uh like you know he's he's got two kids you know he's he's you know moving on to you know greater things and all that but he's just like i don't even want to watch this trailer like i don't even think i can take a whole nother kojima franchise (laughs) Uh, and i was like yeah i kind of kind of feel you um but then there's that collector's edition that Mm -hmm. has the uh you can get a baby in the pod replica if you want one of those and it comes in a suitcase like a, or, you know, um, all that Can for two hundred dollars. Imagine just having that pod like in the living room, and some, I know like, that's a friend the exact comes same over thing. And it's just like so. I still don't. I like, I'm sorry, but I did pre-order it, but I okay. don't know if I'm gonna get it or not. Because yeah, that is like, and I, as somebody who's been getting rid of, of some, it's yeah, a lot of money, and it it's gonna is. be at a time of year where there's a lot of stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Um, I'll decide later, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. like, oh yeah, here's this uh, infamous coal statue. Like, here's my Nathan Drake. What's that baby thing over there? I'm like, oh, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Yeah. Do you know Hideo Kojima? Yeah. <laughs> he directed that movie, Metal Gear Solid Four. Um, mm. I, I don't know. The best. <laughs> it's it's pretty great. It's pretty it's good. It's pretty good. So that's Death Stranding. It's coming out on November eighth. Yep. Yeah. Which is I'm I'm excited. Is this getting I'm delayed? Beyond excited. I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. I I could see it, but I really hope it's not. Same. I wanna believe. Always gotta. Um, especially because like I mean, like, if it does get delayed, the one like nice thing will be that uh we'll still have Final Fantasy Seven to play. 
we'll still have Call of Duty Modern Warfare to play. Right, so Call of Duty Modern Warfare is the other game. <laughs> Two um, weeks before this, this one. G- game formally announced. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, like, Colin, this is probably something that you'll actually play, and I won't. Um, yeah, I, I but, usually like so, to, to rent them and stuff. Yeah, so so this is... Is it is it still like is the reimagining of the first game? Is it going to be the same story, or do, they, do we know? So from I, I know like Price is back. Yeah, so Price is back. I think there may be some other characters back as well. But apparently, um, just from um, stuff I've been hearing in, in previews that people have gotten, uh, it sounds like maybe it was a judges' week thing that some people got to play and other people just got to to see it. Like E three judges' week, that's where a lot of press people get to see games um before e3 um so it sounds like this game was maybe there and i was also listening to the game informer one where like there's there are people there like who saw more than just this campaign that they're talking about um so i would assume maybe next week or you know during e3 we might get more details that people want to talk about um so they didn't call it it's not technically a i guess a reboot or whatnot but it, it's also not a sequel um, they just call it like a reimagining of the first game. So what they're talking mm-hmm. about is, I, I think what they're getting at is, um, usually in a lot of other Call of Duty games now, like uh, a nuclear bomb has already gone off. You know, it's all this really big world ending stuff. And now it's kind of bringing it back to more of the grounded nature that like the original Modern Warfare was. Like, you right. know, I, I feel like if I was to go play you know, uh, Black Ops 4, like, let's say Black Ops 4 had a campaign or something like that, and a nuke went off, it'd be like, oh, whatever. You know what I mean? But, like, when that nuke went off in the very first Modern Warfare, it was, like, this really big thing, and I think they really want to try and reinvigorate that kind of feel again. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if it was Activision themselves, like a a Call of Duty rep, or somebody else, but a lot of people were talking about, they were comparing this to the no Russian level, um, which was in Modern Warfare 2, and it's like they're trying to kind of go for something like that again. So I yeah. guess there's one mission that people have been talking about where you actually play as like a child. And I don't know if you're like a child soldier or if you're just <laughs> a child like dealing with these things. Um, so you play as in the role of like a tier one operator, so I assume maybe like Captain Price. Um, but then in addition to that, you also are playing as like some rebels. Uh, like maybe in like the Middle East or Africa, I'm not really sure. Um, but it's it's definitely going to be more grounded. It has nothing to do with the other modern warfare games. Um, I I don't I don't know how to feel about it yet. I feel like when it first showed that trailer is like two minutes, and it really tells me nothing. Um, it's really a teaser more than a trailer, I guess if that makes yeah. sense. Um, like they they show um, a part in the trailer where you know it's like a bunch of uh, you know you'll kind of like it reminded me of the movie um, the thirteen hours or whatever that was um, the Benghazi movie right. where they're like yeah. running over the consulate and stuff like that like there's kind of like scenes like that um, and apparently like everything in the game is is brand new it's not like you're going to start the game you're going to start the first mission on the tanker and the last mission is going to be in the airplane it's apparently it's it's completely brand new um with a new engine um also having uh multiplayer being the new maps and events were going to be free so there's no like season pass um that was a, a big thing that really kind of upset people previously usually you would have a season pass but you would have um and i'm talking about multiplayer specifically now um you would have uh, like four dlc packs but like each pack would be 15 dollars, or you could buy the season pass for 50 um, black ops 4 kind of got in some hot water last year that they decided to just not even have individual dlc packs it was just like you have to buy the season pass or nothing um, and that kind of kind of i guess like angered some people that you basically had to pay up front for every single thing that you wanted instead of like oh i just want this map or i want that map um one thing is is interesting the progression in the campaign will also carry over to multiplayer that's something i've seen a lot like uh i think halo does that a lot like i've been i've been replaying Mm -hmm. like some of the halo games like halo reach like if i go play three campaign missions it's going to keep leveling up my character, but then if I go play multiplayer, that's also going to keep leveling up my single-player character. 
Um, so I, I, I'm glad that is, is something they're doing because I, I enjoy that a lot more because usually you've had some progression-based stuff in some Call of Duty single players. I want to say like Advanced Warfare had it and Black Ops 3 had it. Um, mm-hmm. But and same thing like even with zombies, like it was three different like progression bars like oh i've got my campaign progression i've got my zombies progression but now it's just kind of all roped into one so that's i'm, I'm happy with that um biggest thing though cross play ps4 xbox yeah. one pc is it do, do you think it's surprising it seems surprising to me and maybe maybe i'm i'm just wrong and i might just be wrong with this and maybe this is showing how out of the loop i am on video game news I feel like not very many people are talking about this. This feels like a bigger deal than people are making it out to be. Yeah, I would. I'd probably agree with that. And and so technically, you've got only a few games that are fully running. I guess I would say you have Fortnite, and I think you have Rocket yeah. League that are in technically beta on yeah. PS4 with crossplay with Xbox One and Switch. Um, yeah. But yeah, this one seems to be the first one that's like full on it's it's going to be there um one thing that i, I still i always kind of feel like i have to preface this because sometimes people might not always know like if i am on ps4 and you're on xbox one we're probably not going to be able to friend up together and play online mm, um yeah. i'll be able to play like against you if we just happen to randomly run into each other um yeah i know this is something that rocket league's trying to do where they're basically trying to create their own like rocket id and like rocket network so that okay. you can match with somebody like you're basically creating their own network and friends list on top of PSN um, but I would assume with this kind of cross play it's really just combining the user base so you know when you jump yeah, in yeah that makes a, a lot more later. sense yeah and especially um, you know there's a lot of multiplayer games that you know after even a year or more like the, the only thing you can maybe only get into is team deathmatch there's all these different modes mm-hmm. that they created that you're just like nope can't play anymore yeah. Uh, really interested to see what happens on the PC side. So it is confirmed to be on um, Battle Battle.net again. The Blizzard launcher, uh, Modern yep. Warfare is going to be on that. And I just kind of wonder about either just be the frame rate unlocked stuff and mouse and keyboard. I, I just wonder how that's going to go um, with crossplay. That was always kind of a, I guess a a fear of other games wanting to it do can- that a concern yeah uh, i don't know like if they'll only have a uh, controller only lobby Mm -hmm. or something like that or like gamepad only lobby um but that's kind of maybe a little bit of a a concern i I don't know probably not that bad but yeah i guess the answer to that is just like we'll see (laughs) yeah yeah maybe someone will ask them at e3 yeah Um, Um, new engine as well that's that's one of the other big things Um, so uh, pretty much this every Call of Duty game since Call of Duty 4 has been running basically on the same old tech old id tech uh, like it's like old id tech 5 I think Mm -hmm. engine which what the original Modern Warfare ran off like ever since then to even Black Ops 4 it's just been like a revised version of that Um, so this is I don't know if they've named it yet but apparently this is a brand new engine uh, one thing that I, I read a little bit about, maybe you can shed some more light on this. Mm-hmm. Huh? The, the pun will reveal itself soon. Um, is uh, the the night vision in this game. Uh, I was reading that it works differently than in prior games. That there was like, it's true night vision or something. Where like it's just straight up pitch black. And you can use night vision to take a more like tactical approach. And like see where things are. And kind of you know walk around and actually like be more strategic about it or you can just like run into a room guns blazing and pitch black um Hmm. have you read stuff about this i I was reading there was a reset era thread about this that and i just read i read a little bit of it and i didn't like follow the thread through but like it seemed it jumped out to me as like a pretty interesting um like addition or new mechanic i guess I don't know if you read it, but anything about this? No, not too much. I knew, like, the original Modern Warfare had night vision segments where you'd, like, go into a house and, like, yeah, like, if you literally took off your night vision, you literally could not see anything. But if you put it on, like, mm-hmm. you're able to see. Um, several of the other games, I think, like, even, like, Ghosts 
had that. Um, I guess I, I didn't see that specifically. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that maybe helps with more of just the grounded nature. I, you know, we, I think still kind of laugh about the, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 night vision that you can use in like broad daylight and just kind of run yeah. around. Um, that, you know, like, you know, if you wear night vision and a brightly lit room, it's just going to be, you're, you're not going to be able to see anything. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I didn't, I didn't hear anything about that. Um, maybe if, if I can find it again, I'll, I'll bring it up. I, I was reading about it like the day it was revealed. Um, okay. And it just jumped out to me again. I, I, you know, maybe yeah. I'm misunderstanding it. <laughs> um, also just wanted to mention there is no zombies in this year's game. Um, it is they the three pillars this year are multiplayer, campaign, and co-op, which um, which they just for co-op they just say intense squad based cooperative play, um, which is interesting mm-hmm. because you don't have um, no word on battle royale or anything, um, which my assumption is that they're going to probably stay with blackout as being their battle royale thing. And that could be maybe going free to play this year, you know. I'm I'm just kind of okay. throwing stuff out there. Like that's my. Usually every Call of Duty game has like three pillars, and if this one already has their three that they're they're talking about, um, I'm kind of wondering there will not be a. There there won't be a, a battle royale. There might be modern warfare elements thrown into Blackout. That's maybe like how they'll try and get people, um, but that is kind of you know. Blackout's one of the very few battle royale modes that you have to pay for to get into, because um, all the other ones are, you know, basically free to play. Um, and, and it'll be interesting to see what even happens, uh, maybe later this year or even next year. I don't know if we talked about, but we had the news of uh, basically Raven and Sledgehammer Games working on the next Call of Duty game for 2020. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you read anything about that. Um, I haven't read too much. I mean, I, I know of it. I've seen the, the yeah. news of that, of what you've just said. I haven't really, like, read a bunch about yeah, it. Yeah, so basically, um, not to take too long, but basically, like, um, Glenn Schofield and Michael Condry, who used to work on Dead Space, they worked on, they founded Sledgehammer Games uh, in Activision. So they did Advanced Warfare, and they did World War II, and then they ended up taking, like, an internal position at, my, at Activision, but then ended up leaving that, so I don't know what they're doing now. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like there's not really that much full leadership, I guess, at Sledgehammer and Raven Software, who, who's done stuff before, has basically been a Call of Duty support studio working on like Blackout and other map packs and stuff like that. Um, apparently they were both working on the 2020 Call of Duty game together because that would have been their next year. That would have been their year to put out a game. Uh, apparently that did not go very well and they have completely shut down that project and basically Treyarch who just released Black Ops 4 last year is being tasked to make basically a Black Ops 5 for 2020 Mm -hmm. now so basically getting rid of that three year cycle and putting Treyarch back on another year which I'm sure they are not very happy about Um, yeah yeah but (laughs) but yeah yeah. it'd be it'd be interesting you know especially you know when it used to be just the two team studio and then they brought brought sledgehammer in um it'd be it'd be interesting to see how how next year's game and i'm i'm sure jason schreier is probably going to have more information probably in the months to come with more leaks and information about it um but yeah just kind of a, a bunch of call of duty news i guess happening um again this game also releasing late october just like the um, the last game as well. So usually they used to be November games. They're moving them up to October. So um, probably yeah, still going to be the um, probably still going to be the best selling game of the year. But you know, yeah. So I I found what I was talking about. Um, okay. It's kind of been I think it's been merged into like they took all the threads on Resetter and merged them into just say Call of Duty Modern Warfare was announced. Um, but there's specifically uh, someone was talking about how. There was a mission where they, like, breached into a room where all the lights had been destroyed. And unlike... And again, I don't have much experience playing Call of Duty. So if this sounds logical, then great. Mm -hmm. If not, then I don't know. Uh, Basically, they were saying that unlike 
previously where night vision was just kind of like a green filter that wasn't necessarily necessary mm. to, just to see in the dark um it's a bit more like pronounced in that like you have to use it okay um, gotcha and and so it's something where you can you can use it pick off enemies or optionally you could just go in and like guns blazing and hope you hope you hit somebody i guess yeah um yeah. so that's not, okay. that that stood out to me as like oh that that could be interesting yeah um, depending on how it's used but so that's yeah so that was some news from this week um with that so colin we are now as of recording about a week away from the bethesda press conference so we've covered that um but the day the day after that monday june 10th um there's gonna be a pc gaming show there will be all some of these like smaller things here here and there the limited run games i think we'll have something either sunday or monday um but ubisoft will have their yearly press conference um i believe around three or four p.m east eastern time so sometime in the afternoon yeah that's our um, usual time. usually usually around the time that they have theirs uh and yeah they should i'm tentatively excited i feel like ubisoft always has a pretty generally entertaining press conference mm -hmm. um no matter the content uh but there pot could potentially be some pretty exciting announcements or reveals here i think yeah um so you know colin we've we've had some time since you put these notes together to think about it uh ubisoft traditionally opens up um they open strong you know they get you mm -hmm. on your feet dancing get, getting you excited for the show uh, and what better way to do that than with Just Dance 2020? Presumably, yeah. is this a, is this announced or do we just like this oh, is just usually it, how they? It's, <laughs> it's just usually what happens at the very beginning. Right. There's a new Just Dance yeah. and it still comes yep. out on Wii, um, yep. of all things. And um, uh, so I don't know what the song so is going to be. What's the song? What, what do we who's think? who who's who's hot right now like like maroon five they're gonna do like a maroon five song <laughs> or something it was the... let's look what is um top is it top 20 do like the billboard billboards give me a second there. riveting type this in billboard what are the top, top songs 100s. right now oh it's gonna be that old um, town road song i bet I, it's well that's so that's number one right now yeah. um that would be funny like a jonas brothers song it looks like is is one of them that's up there oh we got a Ed justin Sheeran? bieber song <laughs> um i don't know any of these songs but i i think hmm i don't know Are you looking at this yeah a little bit you, i'd, you, I'd go with I'd I'd go with Maroon Five just because it seems like they're some of like the more upbeat songs, and maybe sure. they might pull out something from like you know a few months ago that was popular. I don't know, because um, probably what's popular right now might not be in the in the game in, in the game come whenever it comes out. Um, very true. Very yeah. true. Like oh um, Sam Smith, I know I'm who gonna... that is, but then and Normami more no Normani, I don't know who that is. I'm, I'm actually you know what it's still at least in the top 40 so i'm going to give it up to lady gaga um mm. which they've done before uh her song shallow which is of course from the movie that came oh, out last year yeah oh uh, th there you go that's it you heard it here first good wow. uh so so yeah let's get into it um i guess we yeah we can just go through the order that you have it listed here we'll start with one of the big ones the big mm -hmm. guns uh so beyond good and evil 2 this game um I, I do we do we know what the state of this game currently is um they've it's kind of taken a, a kind of open development mm -hmm. um that's a good way to like put it stance which I, I yeah I, I don't know what other way to put it um i haven't really been following it that much mm -hmm. like i i get my yearly updates at e3 um do we know? Do we know it's going to be there? I almost feel like I read something that it wasn't, or that they came out and said it wasn't. Okay, yeah, I I hadn't heard that specifically. I, don't, I um, could be could be totally wrong. <laughs> um, I know I know the next game we have on the list they've said won't be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think every once in a while they still have some like community stream basically showing mm -hmm. off. So big big thing last year was they had Joseph Gordon Levitt on stage, and he I don't remember what company he was with, but basically God, it's really a 
that feels so long ago. It it, it does because that was that original trailer. There, that trailer with uh, the monkey stealing the thing, and I think that mm-hmm. showed um, what's her name? Is it Jade? Mm-hmm. Who's in the first game? That she like shows up at the end. Um, so yeah, Joe Gordon Levitt works for a company that I think just basically kind of helps. I want to say like content creation, basically. Yeah. Um, and basically, when you're kind of meaning by open development, they're basically offering like people to send in art and other things as like like art and music and whatever yeah. for like inspirations to be played. Like, in they the were game. like crowdsourcing content. Yeah. So like you could make a potentially a billboard and it might show up in the city mm-hmm. or something. Um, I I remember that God I I I feel like that was longer than a year ago. It's blowing my mind right now. I'm pretty sure um, that was last year. But, no, I'm sure you're right. It just feels like it's been yeah. longer. Um, I remember thinking at the time, oh, that's neat. Like, that's a cool thing to do. Uh, but it got some, like, it got some blowback, and it was kind of like a mini controversy for a good week or two. Yeah, it was, because um, people wanted them to, like, make the game, not be this experimental well, thing. Well, I think it was that, but also it was this idea of, like, it was unclear if people were, were being paid for it or getting credit. Right. Or, you know, how that whole thing was going to work. And I can understand that for sure. Because, like, you know, some of this type of content is not something that would be, you could just whip up in, like, ten minutes. It would potentially be something that you would, you know, spend some significant time on. Yeah. And so I totally understand that. I don't know. I feel I. I feel like I don't know if that resolved itself or something, or just it, if, if or if the controversy just died down as things do. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard, but again, I'm not really into that community, so I, yeah. I don't really know. I still think it's kind of like a neat thing, and I can totally get. I, I I don't I don't really take a cynical approach to to it. I can totally see where some designers were sitting around a table going like, "Oh, actually, it'd be kind of cool if we get the community in on this." rather mm-hmm. than hey we should get the community to make us stuff so we don't have to spend more money like i'm not going to take the cynical approach on that but, sure i agree with that um, yeah yeah i don't know either way like this game i mean if it wasn't clear before it is almost certainly a next generation title yeah um, so i mean i just have a one word question curtis yeah gameplay i don't know yeah I don't probably know not probably not I, I would say probably not also but I, I don't I do know. I'm teetering like, towards yes, if you, though. If you sh- if if it's here again this year, like I feel like you gotta have something a bit more substantial. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's not ready, I would almost be like, just don't, just like, maybe mention it in passing. Like, hey, you know, it's we're making good progress. We'll, right. We'll be here next year, or something. Because yeah. um, I think most people understand that this is a game that is still probably a ways off. Um. I'm trying to remember, was it 2016 or 17? I think 2017, right? When it was announced? I want to say, yeah, 17, because then this this last one was the first E3 since it had been announced. Because it closed the show, I thought, yeah. at 2017 and then 2018 that kind of opened right after Just Dance, so it's I believe. Been, it's been two or three years. Yeah. Um, I don't remember specifically which one, but, but yeah, I, I still feel like... It just feels like it's farther off, but then again, Death Stranding. Yeah, I was going to say Death Stranding, we thought the same thing, too. What what do we know? Um, So moving on, so Skull Skull and Bones um, will not be at E3. Mm -hmm. It has been delayed indefinitely. Yeah, I I would say that's pretty pretty accurate. I don't know if they ever said 100%, but I would assume at this point they're reworking major parts of the game. Um, I recall just from me seeing it, I was not particularly impressed i guess it really did just seem like the um just the sailing in assassin's creed and it just didn't seem so, like there was all that much depth to it so, so real quick um beyond good and evil 2 will not be at e3 okay uh, sounds wow. like there is a stream that's happening this upcoming week okay good um i'm, I, I, got that I'm actually <laughs> i'm totally fine with that actually i think that's smart okay so you still get to provide an update but not like be there right okay gotcha Sounds good. And and also, it was announced at the 2017 press conference. Gotcha. Sounds good. Great. So, anyways, Skull and Bones. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that clear about it. I guess I didn't. I hadn't read that one about yeah. Beyond Good and Evil. 2. It was it was from like a t- couple of days ago. To be fair. Oh. Okay. Um, gotcha. So, anyways, so Skull and Bones, like, I my take on it, and I, 
I don't know if you share the same thought. I I think a lot of people. I think this game comes from a lot of people being really amped up on the ship combat in Assassin's Creed, mm-hmm. and so this was like a you know way to spin it off into its own thing. Um, but unlike something like Sea of Thieves, this was it just all boats. It was yeah. all boats. There was no character you were controlling, mm-hmm. um, which I think at least for me that was always the thing that kind of took me out of it. Or, like, one of the things where it was like, oh, it would be cool if you had, like, your own character you played as. You could, you know, in between ship battles, you could walk around um, to shops or other things to explore. Um, I think just exclusively ship battles yeah. um, kind of turned me off, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you share the same yeah, same I, thoughts there. I, but... I like the, the style look of it. It, it looked more... Um... I, I want to say I don't want to use the word like more real I guess than than the pirate stuff with Assassin's Creed, but it, it looked like it had a little bit of different style than the Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it, it just didn't really seem like it it did all that much for me at all. Um. I, I just kind of like well well okay now what do you, is it just the ship battle like nonstop? Like I think that might be what they're having trouble um, figuring out because it just felt like it'd be pretty shallow maybe at that point if not to use the word shallow again (laughs) um, in in a Ubisoft sense Um, but um, um, yeah I I think that I think that's a game that is I am not surprised that they're saying it's not at E3 I think that game probably needs to be put back in the oven a little bit I feel like maybe when it's when it was first revealed, I think two years ago, like they, they may have been surprised at the reaction it got. Yeah, I can see that for sure. And maybe it's a next gen game, also. Yeah, maybe they're yeah. just reworking that to that. <laughs> at, at this point, you know why not? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So moving on. Um, next on your list here, we have uh, in a in a question format a new Rainbow Six. Wait, new so, Rainbow so. Six <laughs> Six, Six <laughs> game. <laughs> Oh, no, 66. It, I just what noticed you that. To, what you need to understand is that, <laughs> is that it's 6, S-I-X, and then the number 6. I wrote this so long ago. <laughs> I wrote Rainbow Six, S-I-X, and the number 6. Oh, yeah. never mind. Or, or a go. siege, or update for Rainbow Six Siege. Yes. Um, I, think I don't have said... anything to say on this. You might be more educated on this than I am. So, and it's just this fact that we'll get into the other ones, but I think they actually did show a trailer saying what they're going to have at E3, and yeah. they talked about they're going to have stuff from The Division, Rainbow Six Siege, and, like, For Honor. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, their live services kind of games. Um, I thought specifically, um, you know, we're already getting another Ghost Recon game yeah. um, that they're going to be talking about, which, you know, Wildlands, I think, came out, you know, even, like, a year or more after siege did but siege is is really kind of cleaning up for them i i would say siege is probably their biggest like live service game that they keep updating um that seems to be the case yes they might still just continue to ride that train and and make new updates or i thought maybe they would have a tease for a next generation rainbow six siege game or rainbow six game um, I don't know, but I, I would say more Siege DLC, probably. I mean, at this point, I, I see no reason to just... No reason not to just use this year as a... Riding on that Siege wave, basically. Mm-hmm. And then yep. next year, you can come around and go, All right, yep. here we go. Um, yep. Yeah, so I mean, we can even bundle these together. Uh, so Rainbow Six Siege, sure. Like, more updates on that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the For Honor update... I'm curious to see like what other new things they might add to that. Um, yeah, they did you see their April Fools thing? I did not. Oh, their April I did, but I forgot about their it. Their April Fools thing was really funny cuz they, they put a trailer out for it. You're like, "Aha, that's kind of funny." But then like they clearly made this trailer to be fake, but it was adding the rabbits in okay. For Honor just over April Fools Day. Um, so like when you're fighting normal samurais or whatever, you're basically fighting rabbits and stuff um yeah. so pe- people people took that as like oh that's kind of a funny trailer like people put out but then it was like no actually if you go play for honor you can fight rabbits uh they put that up too so like and that's i feel like that in talking about siege is probably their biggest live service one i would almost assume for honor is probably their lowest one um i i guess i just don't see people talking about for honor mm-hmm. at all i don't either 
Um, so, and I, I guess I, I appreciate their commitment to it uh, and stuff, but mm-hmm. um, they, I think they had Burning Something, something expansion that was out last year. Um, that was kind of like their big, full, big expansion to it. So maybe there might be something onto that. Maybe a new season battle pass thing. I don't know. But apparently it's a game they're going to talk about at E3. Yeah. Um, and we have the Crew 2. <laughs> they're going to mm-hmm. do something with that. Um, that really kind of came and went. Uh, I remember talk- people talking a lot about that just had like no content at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it came out maybe around this time last year, it felt like. Yeah, there's um, definitely like a handful of these where it's like, yeah, before we get updates on on this this yeah. thing that happened, um, Starlink is another one yep. uh, that kind of came out. Um, they had, I, I don't know if it was an expansion, but they had, they, they've they had some updates. There's like that Star Fox. Mm-hmm. Or not, I don't know if it's explicitly Star Fox, but there's like a racing mode um, that people are thinking was like, the, the retro project the, yeah what like what people actually thought like the Star Fox Grand Prix was it turns out it was just Starlink mm-hmm. um, which is funny and weird and odd yeah um and then the Starlink stuff like the toy the toy aspect of it I think has been like ended yeah I think they said they were shutting um, that down so yeah there's like definitely I feel like a good chunk of the show could just be updates on things mm-hmm. um it's a very real possibility. And it kind of was last year, too, to, a, yeah. to an extent. Um, no, so as far as new stuff, I want, there's one thing you have on here that I want. I want more than almost anything. I don't yep. know what the chances are of it, um, but it has been. We are coming up on two years since Mario and Rapids came out. Um, we last did have year, that, yeah. Last year, there was the Donkey Kong expansion, which I never did play. Hmm. Um, I should. I should play that, uh, but I am head over heels in love with the Mario Rabbids game. It yep. is so much better than I think anyone. It would be so hard to convince people just how good this game is <laughs> if they have not played it. Um, it's still, I think, one of my favorite Switch games. Um, and if it wasn't for the fact that it came out, I think in the year that like Breath of the Wild and mario odyssey came out like just two complete juggernauts <laughs> right um this would be a game that like swept up you know um they came like that game came out in a ridiculously powerful year for a lot of video games um but even still like it was still one of my favorite games of the year which i think says a lot mm-hmm. especially about a game that had rabbits in it like that's insane i never would have seen that coming um I am curious what the future of this kind of, like, connection is between Ubisoft and Nintendo. So we've seen Mario, we've seen Star Fox now. Um, I wonder if this team would, like, plans or wanted to or is going directly into a Mario and Rabbids sequel. I wonder if they would want to try to do something else, like a other some other kinds of genres, maybe different Nintendo characters. Um... I don't know. I would love a Mario Rabbids too. I would, I would eat that up so fast. Um, but I, I wonder, Colin, do you think that is happening? Do you think it's happening now at this E3, or do you think maybe there's a better chance of it just being a totally di- different genre of game, different Nintendo characters, um, or or anything? Well, we've got two two straight E3s in a row. We've had Shigeru Miyamoto on stage. So we have to find a way to get Miyamoto on stage again for a third straight year. Yeah. Um, I You know, that's the kind of thing. Like, Nintendo has so many franchises, and that well is so deep that it's like, who even knows, man? Um, I, I Like, you were asking the question. It's like, I have absolutely no idea what they yeah. can do. Like, even just looking at this list, I was like, a lot of these probably aren't even Switch games. So it's like, what are they going to have that would be Switch specific that they could put out? Yeah. Um, and it, and the, the tough thing about predicting it is, like, you never would have predicted Mario and Rabbids. I mean, really, the other like, thing I... Like, it leaked. But other than that, like, no one ever would have been like, oh, yeah, what about, like, an XCOM game? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
and I know it's kind of against what I guess the, the interviews were like, you know, oh, make something different that it's not a platformer or whatever for Mario, but mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I feel like I could see a Rayman Mario crossover. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I don't know, make bring back that UbiArt engine and put Mario in an UbiArt game Man. or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That that'd be that'd be pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's so hard to even like fathom if it isn't just straight up a Mario and Rabbids sequel. Um, are there are there like so so Starlink right like that they they threw Fox in that. Yeah. Is there is there a game that they have like is there a game that maybe we don't even know about that they could announce? Um, what if okay so I mean. <laughs> We'll get to it, but there is this Roller Champions game. Mm-hmm. Um, God, is there a Nintendo character that is like known for being fast? Or I don't even like. Is there someone that could fit in that game? <laughs> like it's gonna um, be like Roller Derby, but then like Kirby's gonna be on a star, just like oh, zooping man. right by him. Kirby's Air Ride. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's back. Mm-hmm. Um, I would want if 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 we're if we're still going with like Nintendo like Ubisoft grabbing a Nintendo character and like making a game around it, um, I would want it to be I wouldn't want it to be like Samus or or even Link like I would want it to be like a Mario or a Kirby, um, something that's a bit more lighthearted. Well, you even had um you know Tropical Freeze was super highly received and and so was returns yeah. sold really well on Wii. Now you've got a platform again that's selling really well. You know, you've got a team that does Rayman games, you know, yeah. put them on a new Donkey Kong Country or something like that. That'd be kind um, of, that would be pretty wild. Yeah, I mean cuz you know Retro may have been working on something Donkey Kong related, Maybe. but now they're <laughs> going to be on on Metroid Prime. On Metroid, yeah. Yeah. Um huh. Could. Um Yeah. But I mean, I even um, like what, something about um, you know when Miyamoto went up on stage to talk about rabbits two years ago, they were holding like those blasters, and it's like, oh, it's you know not something you'll find in Ghost Recon or whatever. So it's like looking yeah. at all these other games, it's like, no, he's probably not going to be in Watch Dogs, probably not going to be a Nintendo character in <laughs> Ghost Recon mm-hmm. Breakpoint or Splinter Cell. Um, yeah. See, I, I feel like Nintendo, or they'll probably just announce something f- out of left field that yeah. is brand new with something Nintendo. And- I, w- I would like to see, either way, I would like to see the announcement of what the team behind Mario and Rabbids, I would like to see what they're doing. And honestly, my hope is that it's another Nintendo collaboration. Yeah. Whether it's a Mario and Rabbids sequel or something completely new, I would like to see them continue to work together. I think that was a team that very clearly loved nintendo and really felt passion about what they were doing and it showed in their work yeah and they got um, the right people i think for i mean even with like grant yeah. kirko coming doing the music oh, yeah. and um like that was it could not have gone better yeah <laughs> like, for sure especially with the this that whole like i mean in in the whole news pre-release of mario and rabbits there was more negative talk yeah. Then positive talk because that game got revealed at E3 and then was out two months later in August, I think. Mm-hmm. And where all the whole year it's just been like, oh, this is terrible. This marketing thing Why would they says do this? Pe- the, Peach is a badass. Like that was the that rab- thing. Rabbits suck. Like yeah, yeah. It turned out they knew exactly what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's exciting. Um, what's next? Uh, so new VR projects. I haven't really been kept up, or I haven't really kept up to date with Ubisoft VR stuff, Colin. I don't know if yeah. you have. Uh, a little where bit. Are we, where are we standing on this? So we had um, kind of the first generation of Ubisoft VR games, uh, where mostly stuff like Werewolves Within. You had Eagle Flight. You also had um, just uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. That actually was a really big success. They even patched that game to be playable in non VR. Um, I feel like there's a lot of other Star Trek projects that are going on at CBS. Like, there's this new Picard show, I Mm -hmm. think. Um, So maybe that's something they can do, maybe make a sequel to um, that. What was the name of the one with, like, Elijah Wood was working on it? Yeah, so that was uh, Transference, I believe. And that was, like, a horror game. came out, I think, late last year or so. Um, That was actually pretty pretty well received. Um, Okay. Kind of had a neat thing where they had a demo out, but the... I don't think they called it demo, but it was like first hour kind of thing. But it had absolutely nothing to do with the game. Um, it's like I like stuff like that. 
Um, then you also had um, the team that did uh, like Grow Home and Grow Up. I can't remember what that is. Maybe it's like Ubisoft Reflections, maybe? Um, that team, they did a VR game that just came out recently called Space Junkies. That's a um, kind of a, I think it might be only 2v2, 3v3 uh, VR shooter. It's kind of um, a little bit like you're flying through space and mm-hmm. you know, you're dual wielding pistols with move controllers and, and shooting things. Um, so like, they, still, they still are attached to that platform, especially with new... Uh, Oculus Rift and Quest things coming out and Valve Index is coming out and you know Ubisoft yeah. loves to support new platforms. Yeah, I was going to say I would not be surprised at all to see some new like VR. Just yeah. like totally new. Nothing yeah. you could predict. Just like, I don't know. Some yeah, new projects. And I'd, I'd like to see that stuff too. Um, I, I'm always and, kind of a person who loves VR stuff. And on, and on top of that, before we move into maybe the, the later handful of things on this list, some bigger projects, um, for a while there with Ubisoft, we had some indie game, like indie level stuff. We had Child of Light. We had Valiant Hearts. Uh, or that's what it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, now, it doesn't seem like we're getting Child of Light 2 or anything like that. Yeah. But, and it kind of like, it happened for like a couple years and then it just kind of stopped. Um, the Ubisoft engine mm-hmm. was really putting out some excellent stuff. Yeah. Um, or they were using that engine for some really great things mm-hmm. uh, and great looking games. And I don't know if we necessarily have a chance at another 2D Rayman game, um, but I would like to see finally like something new, um, whether it's using that engine or just a, a new like small, like just fifteen dollar or twenty dollar release, um, something unique uh, in the way that again those games were. Um, especially Child of Light and Valiant Hearts, like it, whether it's an adventure game or that's really cool, like RPG. Um, like I want to see another one of those. Uh, I thought those games were excellent. Yeah. And it's kind of bummed me out to like not have those from Ubisoft. Yeah. Over the past few years. Yeah, I, I think you definitely see that shift of the live service stuff for yeah for these games now that, that's like that's their focus for now. sure um so um we got some games that we know we know very we know are mm-hmm. happening some games that we can be pretty certain are going to happen and maybe some stuff that is like 50 50 quick could be a coin flip yeah. so ghost recon breakpoint this was formally announced what like a few weeks ago at this point right yeah. um it is a, from my understanding, a pretty direct follow up to uh, Wildlands. It seems like it. I think there's some new gameplay stuff, but it it yeah. almost just seemed like an expansion to Wildlands. Yeah. But no, it, it's it's apparently a full sixty dollar game. It's got the guy yep. who's the Punisher actor in it, uh, who was actually mm-hmm. just patched into a mission for Wildlands because okay. they patched him into a mission for Wildlands. And then it was like a couple days later, like, hey, we got a new Ghost Recon game. And then they announced that he's the main star of it. So I like stuff like that. Oh, that's that's cool. I, yeah. I can appreciate that. Yeah, so he's like um, in a mission in Wildlands. Then when you actually get Ghost Recon Breakpoint, you can actually play as him. Mm-hmm. I, I actually like that a whole lot. It's not going to get me to play those games, but I really like that a lot. Yeah, I, I like that stuff um, too. So that's definitely going to be there for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... This next one, it felt certain. It felt like it was absolutely happening, and then maybe it wasn't. Um, there was, I don't remember who specifically, uh, a couple weeks ago on Twitter was made some comment of like, oh, I'm with X person and Y person, and we're working on the next Splinter Cell. Yeah. And then people freaked out, and then like some other people came out and was like, it was a joke, guys. They were yeah. just joking. Um, but... But Colin, it's been a long time. It it has. Um, so Blacklist was the last Splinter Cell game came out in 2013. Like literally, I think it was October 2013. So like a month before uh, the PS4 Xbox One yeah. came out, it did not get a next gen port. Um, that was a kind of a controversial game, though it did bring back that spies versus mercs mode, which I think is such a cool premise. Um, where you, the, you play as the spies who play in third person, but the mercs play in first person, like a first person shooter. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's so cool. Um, but Splinter Cell Blacklist, I remember, had a lot of controversy because it was the first game where they replaced the voice actor. Um, I don't okay. remember the gentleman's name, but he was not the vo- the normal voice actor was not in it. Um, and I guess it came out later that the actor ended up having some health concerns because uh, last year they put uh, that actor into a mission in Wildlands, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and they brought back the main voice actor. And they've had that little tease with him and Snake talking about each other. <laughs> yeah. do, do you see that? Um, you guys, should, somebody, you guys need to Google that if you haven't seen that, just like Sam Fisher talking about Snake. Um, so I, I think that was really just kind of a, like, hey, guess what? We're He's still around. We're bringing back the, the kind of Splinter Cell that you liked. Um, so I... I would say this is a pretty good bet for a new Splinter Cell. Yeah, I think I think there's a good chance, or at least I would think that there is. Yeah. Uh, the next game, which I, it seems you know I don't think there's really been that too many leaks about this or even teases. It, yeah, it really it feels has like been a pre- It feels like a pretty safe bet though that we're gonna see Watch Dogs Three. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds like this will probably be their November game. I, w- I would think so. I'm I'm kind of hedging my bets on it. Mm-hmm. Um, the one, of uh, really the one leak we have of it is just um, I don't even know if I call it a leak. It was just uh, Kotaku. I think I think Jason Schreier specifically, in like a couple different articles about Ubisoft, has just made like offhand comments of like, like you know, in parentheses similar to how Watch Dogs 3 is based in London. Mm. Or like, uh, just things like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's really all we know about it. I um, think so. But, but Colin, so, you know, you and I actually kind of differ a little bit on this series. I, I think mm-hmm. you prefer one. Um, so I or, never actually played or two, you can explain. really. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I actually, that's still one I need to play, um, but I never ended up playing Watch Dogs 2. Um, I, I could have played... swore that you... I Maybe played I, a, a demo for it, or at some point they okay. had a trial for it. But yeah, the the full game I never ended up well, you um, should do really that. playing. It, it's one that I want to do. Um, yeah, so the, even the the first one um, was one I was pretty excited about. Um, I don't think it's as bad as some people say it is. It's it's like a mm-hmm. flat. It, it really is like a flat seven out of ten kind of mm-hmm. game. Uh, I don't think it's bad. I think there are some cool moments i think sometimes aiden pierce is a little bit kind of a cooler guy than <laughs> what, what what some people consider him to be but like yeah it is kind of you know like oh my niece and oh my daughter and you know like yeah um, it is kind of like I'm that. batman but, yeah it, it really it really is uh that kind of gruffness mm-hmm. the whole time but i always kind of liked the look of of aiden yeah. a little bit um just kind of like with the trench coat and he had the that mask uh over a little bit um yeah i, I like the style that they have of their protagonists remember, even like i remember it... being into it and in, on in the reveal like um, yeah when they first announced it for sure and then the ps4 reveal had that had that gameplay um that kind of yeah. closed it yeah i i still really like the game i still wanted to play the dlc because i think mm. the one of the characters that's in watchdogs is in uh watchdogs 2 i can't remember who specifically mm-hmm. um but so, I, I liked it. So I didn't really care. I mean, I played through one and kind of really, like, bounced off of it pretty hard. Like, I beat it. Um, but it's one of those games that, like, I beat and just really just... I proceeded to dig into a, for a long time. But um, but I loved Watch Dogs 2. And mm-hmm. you should play it because it's great. It is excellent. It's on um, my rent and play list but, or whatever. Uh, but whereas Watch Dogs 1 probably felt maybe a little broody, um, Watch Dogs 2 definitely is, took a more lighthearted, um, it's a very like carefree approach, especially with the protagonist. He's He's got some buddies that he hangs out with, some like hacker friends um, that, he, that he meets throughout the game, but he also is like definitely more upbeat, mm-hmm. um, which I think was kind of a breath of fresh air, I think in a little bit, uh, in, in some respects. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see if they continue to go in that direction with with Watch Dogs Three, or if maybe they lean more into someone who's a little bit more more loner, um, like Aiden was. I guess <laughs> that's a good um, way to put it. I'm curious. So like the only thing we know is London, like that's basically it. Uh, but like we said before, I'm I'm 
I'm pretty like willing to bet that Watch Dogs Three is out this November. Um, and I don't know, like, what do you what do you think? Like, do they like for me? I I'm probably I would say I'm probably pretty excited uh, for another Watch Dogs. Like, I'm I'm down after Watch Dogs Two. Uh, do does Ubisoft need to prove anything to you, or do you like what do you need to see to to get excited for this? Um, that's a really good question because I. I'm not really sure, I, I guess. Um, I felt like Watch Dogs 2 was really leaning into, like, the internet meme mm-hmm. kind of culture. And maybe that yeah. was a little bit of a turnoff for me, I guess. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really know. I, I still really enjoyed that mix of, like, universe that they had with Assassin's Creed and uh, Watch Dogs. Like, how they were really kind of not just n- winks and nods like they were really kind of combining the universes um yeah. like like I, one thing i always think about was the um main guy in the present day sections of um assassin's creed 4 that you were mm-hmm. like it was like the kind of like the bad guy in the modern day sections he ends up like towards the end of assassin's creed 4 ends up like getting like a call like ah oh, i gotta go to chicago and like for this meeting or whatever, and like yeah. one of one of the side missions in Watch Dogs is actually killing that guy, um, and there were some other kind of teases. <laughs> like it really felt like Watch Dogs, like they weren't going to make a modern day Assassin's Creed, so Watch Dogs yeah. was that modern day. So I guess yeah. maybe in a way, I I kind of want them to lean a little heavier into that, but I know mm-hmm. a lot of people probably don't want that. But I and, I and always also, enjoyed that with Assassin's Creed. It almost feels like they're leaning. Oh, or it almost feels like they don't know where what direction they want to lean when it comes mm-hmm. to the the modern day stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't know. Um, I, I'm excited. I hope I hope yeah. that it's definitely more, again, more focused on like technology and hacking and and that kind of thing rather than like going around shooting people. I guess uh, it seems like Watch Dogs Two. I felt like leaned more in the direction i was wanting as far as like what types of gameplay it would be mm-hmm. um so i guess just more of that like a more i don't know yeah i don't know either i don't like there there are probably if i had more time to think of like this is what i want out of a Watch Dogs 3 i could probably bring you a full list um but i'm, I'm curious to see what they show because it, it seems like this is probably going to be one of their bigger games i would imagine uh for their press conference so, um, prediction, whoever the new character is, he will jump in a double-decker bus at some point and, like, chase somebody down in a oh. car with a double-decker bus. Yeah. And it'll be, like, a big set piece moment. That or definitely, like, hacking the, the, the night lights of some major uh building or yeah. monument or like some like <laughs> something something that everyone will recognize the london um, eye that's like the ferris wheel or, like stops because he hacks it yeah. and like shuts it down or something yeah. yeah um definitely something like that yeah I'd, I'd agree with that so we got a a few more things here so we're aware of and again some some leaks have happened there does not appear to be an assassin's creed game plan for this year However, the Assassin's Creed, the next Assassin's Creed that is coming out around the time next-gen consoles will be coming out is apparently based in Norse, like, mythology, mm-hmm. that kind of, and Vikings and things like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's probably a safe bet that it won't be here, but to be honest, I would kind, I kind of would like a tease of it. I would kind of like to see something. Um, but it definitely seems to be their, like, their thing of, like, waiting until the same year or waiting until not that long before, um, to actually talk about Assassin's Creed. I, I would agree, but you're almost at this point, I feel like Ubisoft might be just like, well, you're either gonna see it confirmed on our stage or you're gonna read it on Kotaku, one of the two, so... Very true. We might as well just get out there and say it's coming, um... Especially now that we've, like, had some leaks about it, too. Yeah. Um, very real possibility that's the case. Um, I want to talk about something that's leaked before we get into next-gen teases. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Roller Champions, we've talked about previously, um, some, like, a title screen, some screenshots of this has leaked... It's like a roller derby game. Uh, looks, um, 
I, some people have compared it to like a Rocket League, where it's, it's like World Derby, but you're also like carrying like a ball or something that you can pass around, potentially. I right. don't know. Um, I think some video footage leaked out of it, but then I've not been able to track that video footage down because it's mm. just been gone. It's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> they they disappeared it. Uh, but this is totally potential. Like this is totally something I could get behind. Um, if it looks like it's fun, like depending on how it looks and, and what the gameplay looks like, if this is something that comes out like in a few months and it's what like thirty bucks or something, like I I could totally get behind a game like this. Yeah, I, I almost feel like it's like their next esports kind of game mm-hmm. or something like yeah. that. Um, For yeah, sure. it, it's really kind of a I don't want to call. Oh it like no, ex- Colin, that's what they're gonna do. Oh, it's oh, gonna. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna. Oh, they're gonna shoutcast this oh, thing. Oh, they're gonna have shoutcasters for this oh, game. Oh, you know they are. The, oh no. Oh yeah. Get hyped. <laughs> um. Yeah. I. I just feel like it's gonna be that kind of thing. Like they've they've done shoutcasting before. I feel like on. Yeah. The Ubisoft stage, they've had some games. They've been like, oh, you know, so and so, and they just, they don't stop talking for three minutes. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, remember the time they shoutcasted that, uh, you know, the mini game in Rayman Legends, like the soccer game. I and think they, I remember something about it. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyways. Um, so yeah, that'll be a thing. We'll finally get to see that. It, it sounds like that's actually going to be out on like Switch, PS4, Xbox, like everything. Yeah, that's um, so. So cool. I'm I'm excited to see what that is. Actually, like that's totally one of those things that I could see a lot of people being like, mm, but not my thing. But I'm I'm super into it right i'm down um so yeah well you know something i was just thinking about i guess as we were talking about watchdogs and we we're talking about potential like next gen teases uh if i remember correctly maybe i'm just forgetting about something mm-hmm. um but ubisoft was the first publisher to like show what ended up being a next generation game at their e3 press conference uh, if you remember, the year before, so it was, I believe, 2012, yep. if, I, if my timeline's correct, um, before we, you know, some, some next-gen rumors, I think, had started or were about to start, um, but we had not seen or heard anything about a PS4 or Xbox One, um, but a little a little publisher named Ubisoft ended their press conference with one last title, um, a game called Watch Dogs. Yep. Now, at the time... Uh, that reveal trailer graphically was much was significantly better than it ended up being. Yep. Um, but at the time, there was some mystery about that, what that game was. They just ended on like kind of a, a I, I think just a fake gameplay clip. I don't I don't know that that was real. Such a um, vertical think, slice, you know, that was so yeah, vertical. Yeah. Um, but at the time, whether people want to admit it now or not, people were like myself included. There's a lot of people that were super excited that were kind of blown away by what they had seen. And maybe it was more graphics than anything, but, like, it was a game that looked really, really good. Mm -hmm. And people were pretty quick to to jump on the, like, hey, what was this running on? Like, I think they usually just said a high-end, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they they said a high-end PC, but, like, people Mm -hmm. were pretty quick to to you know start saying like hey wait a minute like this this might be something this might be something else a a one that be like one one that i would go back to also is the far cry and this is you know 2010 at this point 2011 the far cry 3 demo they had at ubisoft's press conference that was mm-hmm. like, oh, it's on PS3. And we're like, if you still go back and watch that from their press conference, that just yeah. looks nothing like sure. the final game. Like, and just no way. So it, I mostly say it with Watch Dogs because, like, even though it was ended up being a cross-gen game, it was, to my knowledge, the first, like, quote-unquote next-gen game that we had seen. Basically, yeah. Like, that was that was the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, And so I wonder... As fe- like maybe even more of a chance now because we do at least like and I, you know again by the time Ubisoft presents we may have learned some th- some like actual details from Microsoft about their next box. Yeah. So do we think? Hmm. I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know if we can begin to guess. But like, do we think Ubisoft has a 
next gen game to show. Um, and again, it could be cross gen to be fair, and yeah. they probably won't. They and also to be fair, they probably would not specify. Or maybe they would. If there's enough information out from Microsoft about their next thing, maybe they'd be more, a little bit more willing to say, like, yeah, it'll be coming to that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but do we think they might have something here? I'm, I'm going to say absolutely, I, I would say. Um, yeah. you kind of, as I mentioned before, Ubisoft loves to support new platforms. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. even the thing that we'll talk about next a little bit uh, for a a quick thing, but I mean, even Wii U to PS4 to, you know, whatever the platform there, they are there supporting it. So I think they'll definitely be ready for next gen as well. I think so too. And actually, as we were going down this Ubisoft list, it, I think I started to realize that it could be kind of a light year for Ubisoft. Yeah. At least with new announcements, I think we're probably going to, I think the majority of their press conference could very well just be updates. Um, which could end up coming across as like a pretty down year for them, but you know that might mean that might make for all the more reason for them to just go, hey, let's do it. Like let's let's show off this thing that's still like a couple years out, right, right, um, or a year and a half out even. Yeah. Cool. So one last thing for Ubisoft, um, as you alluded to. So we know that with Google Stadia. Um, Ubisoft is supporting it at least with Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be honest, Colin. I don't know. I don't. I don't know that I expect Stadia to even be mentioned in this press conference. Oh, I. I, I think so. They were okay. That, I. I feel like the the biggest thing they were always talking about with. I mean, like even um the Stadia press conference announcement, like Eve Gimo was like in the audience, stuff like that. Um, I, I expect out of any conference, either be Bethesda, you know, that did Doom Eternal, talked about Stadia. I, I, I expect there to be some Stadia talk. Uh, I, I don't expect there to be some like exclusive game or anything, but, uh, I mean, even, um, when they announced, um, was it, what game was, oh yeah, oh, dang, I can't remember. There was a Ubisoft game that Aisha Tyler announced years ago that said mm-hmm. it was coming to NX. Like they even said that and i won't say <laughs> maybe right. maybe it was just dance or something i think so. it was just dance i yeah. think it was just dance now that you mention it yeah so i mean like, right. i feel like they're they're gonna have something they're gonna put their game on something i mean i feel like even um yeah some i feel like if i go on to the ea origin store right now i think i could get like assassin's creed on it or something no yeah like i mean i'm pretty sure like they put their games on everything okay um so i i could um, see and i guess some, like the one other thing, and we don't have to talk about it too much, but Google Stadia still was supposed to be out this year. Um, I don't, I don't know that, I don't, I don't know that I've seen any articles recently talking about if they have plans for E3. I think, but I do, I do wonder if we might like get some updates in the next couple weeks. I think so. I want to say something was tweeted. Um, okay, so yeah, I just put it up on Twitter. Two days ago, the Google Stadia official Twitter account had a little thing that said the wait is almost over. So maybe even next week. Um, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we, yes uh, we will. So, Colin, I am, I'm going to slightly rearrange your list here under Square yeah. Enix. Um, but let's talk about what is potentially my most anticipated press conference of this E3 2019. Yes. Colin, mm-hmm. can I get a hoorah? Uh, who, who, hoorah R. First great. departure. So, <laughs> great. Um, so we're going to save the big guns for, for last, but let's go down this list. Uh, Colin, recently... Or actually, let's set the stage here. So Square Enix, they had a press conference last year, if you want to call it that. Um, it, was it was much a more video. Like a, it was a video. It was closer a closer making. It was a like dev a, diary. Yeah, so it was not great. It was, it was actually actively bad. If if you go back and listen to, I want to say last year's podcast that we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you can even listen to that anymore. Um, but I think I ranked EA ahead of Square Enix <laughs> in the press conferences. If that tells yeah, you how bad. bad it was, yes, it was bad this year. They could be on the upswing. Maybe yeah. this is the turnaround year for them. Um, they are slotted in the primetime slot Monday night. 
uh, 9 p.m., typically where Sony would be going, it's Square Enix. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, what what it, what it kind of irritated me last year is like they potentially had they they could have had like a pretty good lineup. They just yeah. did not show it well. Oh, like they showed some some things, but not well enough. Um, this year again, you know, you look at this list and you go, all right, okay, like we could be we could have some exciting stuff here. But we'll see. I guess it's all going to come down to presentation and what they actually have to show from some of these games. Yeah. Um, so starting off top of the list, a couple weeks ago they announced uh, Star Ocean First Departure R. Um, it was like a Japanese announcement, but they're also they they said they will be localizing it. Um, this is if I remember correctly. So it was the the first Star Ocean game had a remake on PSP, mm-hmm. and this is like a remake or reimagining of that version. That's that's what I've heard as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is exciting. I've never played the first Star Ocean. Like, I'm super down for this. Um, I love that cool. name. I always love that name. Like, I think it's such yeah. a cool name as Star Ocean. I just think that's a good. Oh, yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. Uh, Star Ocean 5, you know, I I played and finished it. I enjoyed it for what it was. It's not uh, great. Mm. But, you know. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited to play the first one. It's not. It's one I've wanted to play before. I just never have. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be that'll be cool. I imagine we'll see at least a trailer of that or something. Probably mm-hmm. not too much more. Maybe a release date. Maybe. Uh, but one game next up on the list is something that I actually like. I really, really am excited to see. Um, is Babylon's Fall. So this is one of several games that Platinum is working on right now. Uh, last year we had a CG like teaser trailer, hinted at some of the lore. Uh, about the game it's kind of a forgotten yeah. game it's like no one's like yeah. oh yeah like they kind of forgot about oh it. yeah babylon's fall. oh because like platinum's over there working on bayonetta 3 and astral chain and and near three probably mm-hmm. and, and scale bound and, like, for they've got, nintendo they've got, they've, got, right? <laughs> they've got like 50 other different things they're working on and so people forget about about this thing um yeah like i'm super curious to just know what it is um, see gameplay and like I'm I, I wonder when it would even come out or I don't know like Astral Chain's just a couple months away um, Bayonetta 3 kind of seems like maybe it's still a little ways off it's pretty unclear Yeah. so yeah I'm, I'm curious like is this something that is coming out this year is this something that's still like maybe a year off maybe early 2020 who knows yeah that's um, I don't know I would expect yeah. not this year, but you never know. Yeah. Um, so next, Final Fantasy XIV. They got an expansion coming out pretty soon. I think, actually, I think it's this month. Yeah, I wondered if it was uh, out, Shadow actually. Rangers. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Or maybe it's out. I, don't, I think it's coming out soon. I've seen some previews. Like Well, well, Curtis, you know, open. I've got a PapaJohns.com uh, coupon code oh. for Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Uh, you know, Final you can Fantasy Pizza this. just never you can never get away from it. Yeah, call back to crossplay episode one. Dude, like Final the Fantasy amount of like cross marketing shenanigans Final Fantasy seven is gonna get up to. Yes. Oh man. I wanna have like a flower shops like pro- cross promotion where you can get like heiress <laughs> roses um... and I don't know. Or like uh, what is it like edible creations or something? Uh, you can get like your bouquet of of treats and stuff. With, mm-hmm. uh, use promo code Aerith. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. Um. Go on. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, so you have listed on here also, um, Life is Strange. Or a Deck Nine Life is Strange. Uh, yeah, the only the only I things know. I was putting on there was yeah. I mean, we might get an episode four. I still have not played episode two or three yet. I haven't played two or three either. Um, I we, need to. Uh, yeah, I need to do that. Also, I've been thinking about it. But um, yeah, I, I just kind of wondered if I I would assume Deck Nine uh is working on a new Life is Strange game of hmm. something of some sort, maybe a spinoff of something. Um, so I, that's what I just maybe. wondered. So I I I guess I wouldn't be too surprised if and. I don't know. Maybe it's too early for an episode four trailer. It's yeah, in August, I think so. right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd agree. Okay, and I would honestly prefer there not to be anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't just, been watching for fear of spoilers. Trailers. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. So let's see. We got some other maybe some quick ones next up. So Dragon Quest Eleven S. 
um, it's coming to the Switch. So, yeah, for sure, we'll have some new trailer for it, maybe some more info. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know. Since it's a game that has released already, I don't know how much, unless there's new features that they haven't talked about. Um, I don't know how much more info they could share. Uh, Octopath Traveler, similar situation where it's coming to Steam. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe just like like another trailer for that, but probably nothing new necessarily. Um and, and then we so, get to some, or you go. Ahead, yeah, go ahead. I, I just, I just want to say even before that, um, a lot of the stuff we're talking about is um, more of internal uh, Square Enix yeah. stuff. And really, yeah. I was thinking about just their their publishing arm. We'll talk about the big one coming up, but I mean stuff like Shadow of the Tomb Raiders out, mm-hmm. Just Cause Four is out. They mm-hmm. don't have Hitman anymore. Um, so it was just kind of just feeling like like i didn't know if they would maybe try and get you know it feels like they've been trying to do more with like that quiet man they did out um what was that limbo kind of s game that they put out maybe a year or two ago that they ended up being published by square enix um i can't remember that name of that game and they have they have um i think it's like square enix collective or something where Mm -hmm. it's like an indie indie kind of initiative to have like people submit like their pitches or projects and, and then square Enix will pick it up and publish yeah um so may- you could even maybe in theory see stuff like that or i like i like where you're kind of leaning with of like maybe maybe there's announcements on some movement they're making with the western publishing arm mm-hmm. um maybe another studio or something or another game from one of their their studios um there's the big one which is probably taking up some some yeah. time i'd say it's their <laughs> focus yeah, um, and we'll get to that for sure. Yeah. But before then, there's just a, like this. The next like three or four things is just my heart. Mm-hmm. It's, my, it's my it's my soul. Yeah. It's what keeps me going. Um, so Nier Automata is about a little over two years old now. Um, presume like obviously Yoko Taro is working on something new. Whether it's a Nier game, I don't know. But it's something new. Uh, the other question is, is he working with Platinum on a next game? Uh, and that's, again, also something, like, who knows? I even remember thinking, hey, could Babylon's Fall potentially be, <laughs> you know, be something that Yoko Taro is involved in? Yeah. If he was, you'd think that he would be listed in that teaser trailer, which he wasn't. Um, yeah, but it's but Yoko I wonder, Taro, though. <laughs> who knows what kind of weird stuff that's he true. comes up with very true um i i do wonder about whether or not a near three is something that he would do or if it's or does he or could it be more like is near automata like all right i've told what i can tell with this world like i want to move on to something different um i don't know i don't know what to expect i i do think that we're approaching the territory of maybe it's time for yoko taro to announce whatever the next thing is um, two years might be too short. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is going to sound weird, but it's almost like when the first Nier came out, it's like, oh, okay, you know, now I've got some followers. You're like, you know, people were, some that's got a cult following, but then, you know, Nier Automata is like, okay, now that I've got your attention kind of a thing, and now it's like, what's the big thing that Yoko Taro yeah. is going to do? Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if... I would, I would maybe... I would maybe say there's more of a chance that we could see something from him this year because I want to believe that Square Enix is not dumb enough to grab the prime time slot Monday night and then just not have like all that much to show. Yeah. I want to think that like they're aware of like, Hey, this is like people are used to using this time to watch Sony just like blow out a ton of crazy stuff. Mm hmm. Um, I would like to think that they're aware of that <laughs> and that they know yeah. and that they were like, hey, we're doing this because we have a lot of good stuff to show. Yeah. Um, especially after last year. But again, like, this list isn't necessarily that long. And, you know, I certainly don't think Final Fantasy 16 is being announced anytime soon. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, and so I just wonder, yeah, I wonder, like, what other things that they could have up their sleeves? What could they be doing? Um, I think a, a new Yokotara announcement could totally be 
totally be something they could roll out. And if you remember, like, Nier Automata, when it was announced, was the definition of teaser trailer. It was, like, some concept art, like, that they were just kind of scanning, or, like, doing a, a slideshow with some animation and some text over it. It wasn't until, I think, Gamescom, even, that we saw gameplay of Nier Automata. Um, yeah, that was there. So, like, even I don't think this event, like, it's supposed to be another video here, right? I don't know. Okay, I thought it was maybe another, like, a Nintendo Direct video say to play kind of thing. Where, yeah, that last one you're kind of referencing was, like, the last time they had, like, an in person yeah. press conference thing. Um, yeah, that's that's my biggest wonder is if it's still, I assume it's still going to be a video, but um, I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, but, um, but I don't know. To kind of, like, sidestep on the Yoko Taro thing a little bit. Um, so there was, you're going to might you might know more than me, but there was the old, like, uh, Tales series producer from Bandai Namco yeah. that went to Square Enix, mm-hmm. and apparently that project got canceled. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anything come with that. Uh, I was also and one he, that didn't put on here. So was he owned. left. Right. He also left Square Enix okay. before it was canceled, I think. Gotcha. And or then after, there was I don't know. also Oninaki from Tokyo RPG Factory. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about um, that. Actually, I think that looks really good, and... I, I think this is a great place to get like a release date for that game. I I think so too. Um, but just yeah, even to go back to the Yoko Taro um, near stuff. Um, yeah, I, I I think it's too early. I don't know what mm-hmm. other internal Square Enix stuff is doing. Perhaps. Um, yeah. Maybe like is that Bravely Default team that made Octopath Traveler way too early to announce a new game? Maybe all that probably kind of stuff. it probably is. Yeah, Un- I probably agree. Unless that they were like porting Bravely Default to Switch. Yeah, I can um, see that. Which maybe that could be possible. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great time for Square Enix to bring out Miyamoto in their video, um, and announce Super Mario Legend of the Seven Stars two. Oh yes, please. Ugh. I think now's the time. Directed by Yoko Taro, of course. Mm, of course, yes. <laughs> how could how could it not be? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm. With, I think I'm with you that it's probably too early, but I would love. I would love for it not to be. Are Are we going to get a World Ends with You sequel? We had the remix last year. Is was that mm-hmm. setting up a new announcement for a new game? Maybe. I mean, that'd be great. I want to believe that that's the case. Um, I <laughs> maybe yeah. we do. Maybe we do. Um, I will say with Kingdom Hearts three, um, it makes me think that maybe there's a possibility that we'll, <laughs> that we could we could see that world again in some form. Yeah. Um, but one thing uh, that we do know is coming. And I think actually this would be a, a great place to see it, and we have it listed here, is some DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. Um, we know that some in some form we're getting it. I would expect it to be like an episode of some like story DLC, an episode of some sort. I don't know that we would get a hmm. a Disney World. I think that we... I, I'm curious about when, it, when and where it would take place. Um, I don't know that we would get something that would take place like after the secret ending yeah. um the the secret ending of that game is like a pretty big oh my, what um it would be super cool if we had like a dlc episode that like took place in that location with those characters i don't know if i expect that to be the case um but with that said i also don't know where and more story for King Hearts three would happen. Um, episode my, Mickey, uh, episode Donald. Well, so episode. so yeah. So like my only guess would be, um, and King Hearts three, Riku and Mickey are kind of on their own, teaming up, going around doing things while you're going through the story of the game. So that would be my only guess is that whatever story DLC we get, you're playing as Riku. 
and it's you and Mickey going around some of the... Because that way you could totally go through the worlds they've already created. There's just new missions, um, some new story beats. Um, that would be my own... That would, that would be my best guess. Uh, but I do think we probably get a tease or a reveal of whatever the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC like landscape looks like. Um, so this is kind of a prediction. I was just thinking about wh- what do you think the chances are that this gets a, like Kingdom Hearts 3 is a Switch port? Do you think that can happen? I mean, I think it could happen. I don't know what the chances are of it. To right. Me. Um, and the only um, reason, because I mean, all the handheld ones were, well, I guess except that one PSP one. Like, you know what I mean? All, a lot of them. Kingdom Hearts has been on Nintendo for technically more games than any other platform i guess technically but yeah um yeah i don't maybe. know yeah that was just kind of i don't know it's kind of thrown out because we're getting dragon sure. quest didn't know if that would be it'd be definitely I mean, it'd be a cool. visual downgrade but definitely yeah. i know and maybe maybe we get the kingdom hearts like the other hd remakes ported over mm-hmm. i think that's maybe a bit more likely um yeah but we'll see uh, so next up we have Final Fantasy 7 so we know this is for sure going to be there um, I had assumed that this would be like their one big major title yeah um, until this past week um, I still think it's going to be like a major for like a major focus of their show Monday night um, but Colin unless you have anything else to add I feel like we really covered this game a couple episodes ago yeah I would agree um, I don't I don't know that we have. I have anything else to say personally until we actually see it. You know, I, I think that's. I think that's a, a good thing because you know, really, we don't really know anything else other than what we saw a few yeah. weeks ago. So yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, with that said, it's probably the the single thing I am most excited to see at E three hmm. by a large by a large margin. Nice. Unless there's in a Yoko Taro game, then it's different. But <laughs> even even ahead of Gears Five. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I knew you're pretty excited. Oh, I knew you're. Slightly. I knew you're a big uh, Gears esports player now. I'm a, big, I'm a big, big Gears guy now. Yeah, I know you are. That that and Roller Champions. That's yeah. all I'm thinking about. <laughs> exactly. So finally, um, Square Enix did confirm this week that Marvel's Avengers, the Avengers project that they teased, however many years ago now. I want to um, say it was 2017. I believe so. Because I'm pretty. That sounds right. I'm pretty sure the timeline of this was that. They announced it in 2017 with that like little CG thing, and then they yeah. said more info in 2018, and then 2018 mm-hmm. came and we got absolutely nothing, and now it's 2019, and now we're finally starting to hear some stuff about it. Yep. So, it's going to be there. They they did confirm it. We're going to get our first look at it. Um, one thing I th- I was thinking back on... If you remember, this is a while ago now. It was during one of Square Enix's like um, cute quarterly reports or whatever. They were talking about like the next few years, and they were talking about how between Kingdom Hearts three, Final Fantasy seven, the Avengers game, um, about like what the release schedule was going to be like for them. Mm-hmm. And basically, it, it pointed out that like over the next three years, like they would be they would be released, and people kind of put it together of like, oh, okay, so Kingdom Hearts three is next year. Final Fantasy 7, or, or like, Kingdom Hearts 3 next year, people thought, like, oh, maybe Avengers would be after that, and then Final Fantasy 7 the year after that. Um, right. And I think back on that, and, like, presume, like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 was actually delayed from the end of 2018 into 2019. Um, which, like, and so you see how that yearly pattern would switch out to where Avengers would line up to be either around the console launch or maybe early 2021 um or is it something something along those lines where with final fantasy 7 being either end of this year or early next year and having the three of them kind of be spaced out by about a year each um but the e3 coliseum website um Mm -hmm. it was uploading like the uh the schedule for all the different like developers that come on the live show and talk about their games and stuff and as it usually does uh some of these were went up a little early um mm-hmm. so something we we actually haven't talked about um is there is a new darksiders game 
that's probably going to be announced. Yeah. Um, okay. Somewhere. I don't even know if necessarily during a press conference, but just probably be announced throughout the week. Sounds like it is maybe a spinoff of some sort. Um, but a descri- like a description for that leaked and a description for the Avengers game leaked. So, mm-hmm. Colin, have you read this? Do you want to know what this is? Um, lay it on me. Let's, let's, okay. let's hear it. So, the description for Marvel's Avengers from Crystal Dynamics, as per the E3 Coliseum website, is as such. Embrace your powers and join key members of the development team at Crystal Dynamics and the creative team at Marvel Games as they talk exclusively about the upcoming Marvel's Avengers. This is the defining Avengers gaming experience, uh, colon, an epic action adventure that combines cinematic storytelling with continuous single player and cooperative gameplay. Um, moderated by Andrea Rene, assemble in teams up to four players, master extraordinary abilities, customize your heroes to fit your playstyle, and combine powers to defend an ever expanding world under constant threat. <laughs> It's um, I feel like whatever song they use to announce this, it's just not going to be the same without that Avengers theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that I think that, you know, it doesn't give a whole lot of info, but it definitely paints a picture of, okay, like this is, this is sounding like, you know, potentially a games as a service kind of thing. Um, you could see, you know, a focus on cooperative play. Um, I'm I'm picturing straight up like someone. I'm I'm picturing superheroes as like classes, so it's like okay, I've got my hawk. He's level thirty. Um, he's got this gear on, but like in, for this next raid, I'm gonna take my Captain America. He's level forty. Uh, he's got he's got this the the level the level seven um, shield, and I've got my platinum like rupees on that they're mm-hmm. embedded in it um so you're gonna take your iron man um he's lower level but we'll get him we'll get him leveled up like i'm totally picturing yeah. that it's, right it's like, like a, it's like a yeah it's like a destiny raid but yeah like you want to do the thanos Marvel raid Avengers. tonight yeah i mean like sure. that sounds exciting to me like I'm yeah super down for that but then I don't know. I feel like online it could be. I, I hopefully they don't do like a Destiny thing where it's like really hard and you have to use voice chat. And mm, I would assume yeah. not that kind of thing. It'd be like, oh, your Thor sucks. Like it's terrible. Yeah. Like sorry, yeah. I only got a level three Mjolnir hammer and not the. I definitely. You know, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what's the name? Well, I'm, I'm totally blanking. On what's the name of the axe for uh, Th- that Thor has now? It, something something bringer. Uh, a stormbringer yeah. stormbringer yeah that's totally that's totally it. weapon you can get um i'm like i'm kind of down for it if i can get the right group, group of people um i will be playing this probably single player all the way if i play it <laughs> right like well i probably would too but as far yeah. as like raids are concerned like sure. you know that that could be exciting um especially like it's it's totally like you know hitting at that right time where like the mcu is like in a refresh mode possibly after the last movie but we're like at peak excitement right now (laughs) right um so you know whenever it comes out it could potentially hit at a good time where people are familiar with who these characters are i'm hoping i hope it's not a situation of like oh you create your own superhero oh no i don't want any of that i don't want any of that i like i want to play as iron man or I want to play as Captain America. I think or I that's, want to play as whoever. I think that's what they're gonna do. My my concern. So basically, the the story stuff I think is is good because uh, that's that's leaning into what they've done in the Tomb Raider uh, games recently, um, like you yeah. know, kind of linear story driven stuff. I really worry about so like the um oh the Ultimate Alliance three. Uh, had this problem, the VR Iron Man game had this problem, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite had this problem, where it's like you're seeing that they're leaning into the MCU stuff, but like here's a guy Mm -hmm. that looks and kind of sounds like Robert Downey Jr., but he's actually not Robert Downey Jr. I wonder how they're going to combat that, that people are going to kind of compare it to like, oh yeah, well, but he's not Chris Hemsworth. Like, yeah, it's Thor, but it's not Chris Hemsworth. Like, that kind of stuff. Um... I just wonder how that is going to be received, I guess. Like, I feel like they're going to have to get some really top-tier talent 
to be able to do that. Um, For sure. I and know. I, I want to like, I also want to say that I, I've seen, and again, grain of salt. I've definitely, I'm trying to pull it up now. I've seen some like supposed insiders on like Reset Era, for instance, saying like, hey, I've heard some things too. Here's some more information. Um, and, one, and I'm trying to pull it up now, but one of the things I remember reading was that they were actually story-wise taking more of a focus from like the comics rather okay. than the MCU. Right, right. And um, and I, and I can I can see that for sure. It's just I feel like when you see whoever's playing Iron Man, and he's not. You know, he doesn't act and sound like Robert Downey Jr. If it would be like, well, that's not what Iron Man. Is. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing, I guess. Um, I don't know. No, I'm totally with you. Like, it's you have the sound alikes, and it's like, mm, that's not. I I think that the trouble is, you know, with these movies and being as popular as they are, like Robert Downey Jr. just is Iron Man. Yeah. And it's probably going to be a long time for people to like hear a different voice and be okay with it yeah i agree you know what i mean um and so i think that's that's totally like an issue that we have to we have to jump over um but regardless i do have um if you give me a moment i'll i have the list of other kind of points that people okay. were yeah leaking or, or what's whatever um other things that i was thinking about though is how many playable care like if it is something where you are playing as the actual like characters um like how many would it just be the core avengers team where they branch out into like guardians of the galaxy um you know who all would we be looking at um if it's if, again if it's a kind of destiny style approach where you're playing as certain characters and leveling them up and getting gear and stuff like that um, I wonder if, like, it almost seems unrealistic to expect a ton of characters to be playable. Um, I would almost think it's more likely that you get, like, four rather than um, 12. Yeah, I'd say four is probably the right thing, yeah. Because you're kind of leaning into, like, an Overwatch game after that, in a way. Um, I feel like you're like, oh, like, oh, I'll choose this hero, you choose that hero, and... Um, it's like, oh, then we'll add, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I, I agree. For sure. Um, well, anyways, if I end up finding the, uh, some of these other, like, potential leaks, I'll, I'll bring them up, but, um, to close out, uh, Square Enix related stuff, is there anything specifically from Avengers you'd like to see? Is there anything that, um... Like, are you on board with the concept right now, or do you think like the? Is there anything they need to show you to get you like, to get you locked into this? So I'm just not really a huge Marvel guy. Um, so I I I really I, I just want something. I want something new. I want it. To, you know, I don't want to compare it to you know the Spider-Man Insomniac game. Um, but it it really did. The, the Spider-Man game really took a lot of um, gaming tropes that you would assume out of a first game of a franchise. Like, oh, it's going to be the origin story. He's going to be young. He's not going to have these powers yet. He's going to learn how to get his powers. But it's like, no, like, we're just focusing on making a great Spider-Man game. Um, and, like, specifically, like, story-driven stuff like that. Um, I, I guess I would just say that's what I want out of that. Like, you know, if I can watch this trailer or, you know, see some gameplay of it and then watch this, you know, cutscene trailer right after it and be like, oh, man, Thor, like, yeah, that really does suck. Like, oh, damn, like, I want to, yeah, I want to play this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, that's that's the kind of stuff that I want, not just a, oh, yeah, they're going around and they're beating those aliens and, yep, you know, that's kind of stuff I don't really think I'd care for too much. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um, and I do, th- I do also think about, like, some of the recent success we've seen from Marvel superhero games, namely Spider-Man, right? Mm-hmm. Is it's a game that was just like, let's just make a good Spider-Man game. Mm-hmm. Let's not worry about sequels you know, or universe, like, or, yeah, yeah. Or, or anything like that. Let's or all our like our big plans on how we're going to support it over the next five years. Like, we're just going to make a good Spider-Man game, and it was like it, it had a focus, and they stuck to it. And they stuck the landing, and it was excellent, right? 
Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm totally like into a cool, you know, and it's also weird because we're getting ultimate Alliance in like a month. Um, yeah, for sure. So <laughs> like, I'm, obviously this is probably going to be it's probably still going to be quite different yeah it's probably not going to be as Um, as arcadey i guess as ultimate alliance will be um i don't want to say like oh hopefully it's like this really serious game but like you know i I don't expect to be like dark in the tones like the arkham games or something like that but Mm -hmm. I, i expected a little bit more more realistic kind of sense i guess for sure. That makes sense. Um, so one other thing that I, I've seen, I've actually seen this in a few other locations, and I'm not all that familiar with the character, but um, there's been some rumors that like Miss Marvel is going to be one of the lead characters for this game. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm honestly not very familiar with that character at all. Yeah, um, I'm not I've seen some really either. Like express excitement over that. Um, mm. So that's cool. But but yeah, I mean, I, I think. Other than that, we have a little over a week until we find out what what this game is, and we. I'm hoping that we see some actual gameplay for it. Um, I'm expecting it to still be a, a ways off, and I expect it to yeah to yes be at least a cross gen game. Um, but I'm I am hoping that we see some some significant gameplay for this. Yeah, same. Or at I, least I enough that enough that we have a pretty clear idea of like what this game is if they come out and show a trailer and then just dev diary talk it up like they did with a couple of the games last year for mm-hmm. their presentation ugh, that's gonna be pretty disappointing i think but yeah all right um so i actually did find it really quick and we'll move on to uh, nintendo mm-hmm. uh but some quick like bullet points basically as far as like again this is super grain of salt territory here um, so Cam- Kamala Khan, who I, I believe is Miss Marvel, uh, 100% be a central pr- protagonist in Avengers Project. Um, the Avengers have been disbanded for a while due to a, quote, catastrophic event. Hmm, weird. Uh, and she will play an <laughs> integral role in reassembling the team. Mm-hmm. Um, second bullet point, heavy story focus throughout, um, drawing more so from comics versus MCU. Uh, can be played entirely solo with you controlling one character and AI taking over the remaining one to three up to four player co-op with friends. Um, crashed helicarrier will serve as the main hub. Uh, here's an interesting point. I don't know what to make of this. Um, again, super rumors on, on all of this. Super um, rumors. That's all super, I like that term. Super rumors. I like that term. Uh, Kingdom Hearts-like world and level design. Think multiple large worlds, levels, versus one huge open world map huh. um, levels are large enough to accommodate fight based or flight based mechanics um, last couple here there's definitely no quote loop like you'd find or loot like you'd find in typical looter shooters um, like common to legendary drops um, everything is mostly powers based um, so like characters have skill trees uh, so for example you won't be finding Iron Man thrusters of different rarities throughout the mm. map that's true. Um, and then, unless it's changed, Miss Marvel, Iron Man, and Hulk will make up the team build early in the game for story reasons. Okay. Yeah, so, they'll introduce new ones. And, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so that kind of jumped out to me. Um, it's kind of popped up recently. So I, I feel like maybe I'm giving it a little bit more credibility as like, oh, okay, this kind of lines up with some other things. Um, so there's that. Yeah, I'm super excited to see it, at least. Um probably one of the most know, anticipated games for sure oh for sure yeah and it'll, it'll that I'm, I'm curious how they position like that and final fantasy 7 are definitely their two major games this year mm-hmm. um it'll be interesting to see how they like how they position both of them yeah i'd probably say one at the end one at the beginning maybe yep. you gotta sandwich it in yeah for sure okay. which one's which one's first do you think uh final fantasy 7 I, I would say so too yeah yep um, that one's probably, like, in theory, probably much closer to release. I would think. Yeah, I would think so too. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, with that said, Colin, we have one last E3 event to go over. We do. And it's, I mean, it's always like maybe isn't always the best, but it's always the one that I love to end on. 
that's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put there's, it. There's nothing quite like waking up that Tuesday morning knowing that you've got just Nintendo. It's all that's left, and they can either clean up shop <laughs> or they can't. Um, yeah. This year, I am feeling pretty good about where Nintendo stands. Um, one thing that we should mention right off the bat is on June 6th, so this Thursday, um, or yesterday, depending on when this podcast comes out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there is a Pokemon Sword and Shield Nintendo Direct. Oh, that's right. So I say there's a pretty good chance that we probably won't have a huge focus on Pokemon Sword and Shield during the Nintendo Direct for E3. Right. Um, but we will be learning quite a bit about those games this week. Uh, one other thing, Colin, did you watch the Pokemon press conference this past week? I did not. I couldn't get myself to want to watch it. It was highly entertaining. Okay. Maybe not on, on purpose. No. Oh, oh uh oh. But it was entertaining. Okay. Um, I am in love with whatever Pokemon Sleep is. I so heard anyways. something about this, <laughs> yeah. Colin, they spent a long time talking about how they really want you to like gamify sleep. Oh no. Or, oh yes, like, I don't know. I it, I was I was oh yesing the whole time, just like yeah, yeah good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so th- that's a whole other thing we could talk about that another time. But uh, so Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, so yeah, I guess let's just start there because we have a direct coming up for this this week. Um, presumably, so we have like release dates for the game. I we've seen the three starters. We've seen some gameplay footage. Um. We'll start with you. Do you have like I know you're the big Pokemon fan of the two of us. Obviously. So, <laughs> um, what would you? What do you expect from this? Um, I expect po- Pokemon. Great. So how? Ma- so so like I think the expectation is probably that there's like we're gonna see new Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> right. Like, like we're, gonna, we're gonna see. Yeah. Yeah. Three, new Pokemon. Like, yeah. That sounds great. I mean, yeah. How how many? What do they look like? What mm-hmm. are the names? Um, so Colin, I gotta ask, like, how many new Pokemon do you think we're gonna see? Give me a number. Uh, I'm gonna go with 12. They're gonna just be in the, they're just gonna be shown in the trailer. Not, we might not even get everybody's name, but it's just gonna be like, hey, here's this new guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm anticipating at least, like, I'm thinking, like, 15, 16, and one of those is gonna be either, like, so utterly adorable or horrifying that it's gonna spawn it's gonna spawn a meme that lasts for like three days probably yeah um there is a there is a pokemon out there right now that doesn't know it that is going to be revealed this week and going to be turned into a joke (laughs) poor guy (laughs) yeah i I don't know it'll probably be a shield yeah um but that is one thing that i am curious to learn about is the format for this game so pokemon sun and moon um they they ditched the gyms they went with like island guardians uh, so it was sort of similar but it was it, it was different enough um and some more story thrown in um this game seems to be bringing gyms back um but there is from the first trailer um there's some sequences where you see your character walking into like a huge arena mm-hmm. uh, with like an like a full-on like a sports outfit on Um, So I'm kind of curious to learn what that's about. I'm also interested to know, so with the Sword and Shield naming, uh, there were some rumors that um, Pokemon might be getting, like, you can put, like, armor on your Pokemon. that's right. I remember seeing something Um, about it. So I'm really curious to learn about whether or not that's true, and if it is, to what extent. Um, I also totally think that means we're getting an armored Pikachu reveal with um an armored pikachu limited time being in pokemon go uh i think so like um probably a couple others it's gonna be great (laughs) it's gonna be great (laughs) oh my goodness so that's Uh, happening yeah yeah yeah. great sounds great curtis you know what sounds fantastic um detective detective uh snorlax bring it on the detective pikachu 2 is the thing I don't know if you heard that. Well, the first game's coming to Switch too, isn't that what this no? Thing I is? the, the the wording on that was specifically like 
it very much sounded like they were bringing they were making a sequel for the switch now that okay. the first game was coming out okay i thought it um because they mentioned that the first game ended on like a cliffhanger which it did mm-hmm. um and that on switch you would be able to see the conclusion of the story okay and they they were it was again this was like translator like over over the stream but the wording seemed to imply that like the ending would be different from the movie okay gotcha yeah so that's interesting i don't know how far off that is or if we'll see it at e3 i don't expect to yeah yeah um so tuesday morning um in their typical time slot nintendo will have their nintendo direct and then of course throughout the day they'll have like their treehouse live stream um they've they've said the direct will focus on switch games i anticipate there probably might be like a couple 3ds stuff Maybe a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to say zero. And the only reason I say that is specifically two years ago when they announced Metroid Prime 4 and then Metroid Mm -hmm. Samus Returns. They did not even... They mentioned Samus Returns after the whole thing. So I think it's probably going to be only Switch. Okay. So um, to kick things off, of course, we do have... uh, Just going down your list, uh, we have Super Mario Maker 2. Um, So this game's a few weeks out. And we did just have a Nintendo Direct dedicated to Super Mario Maker 2. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't know that I would expect too much from this during yeah. the conference. But there is like the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational or something, I think, that's going on throughout E3 week. Right. So that'll, I, you know, maybe a mention of that. And but you I don't, can go I don't, play Mario Maker 2 at Best Buy this week. Only yeah. at, yeah, I don't the, know. The only thing I can think of, though, is during the Direct, they were showing additional styles. Mm-hmm. And there was that space open for, like, another one. Yep. So maybe, like, a quick trailer to say, like, hey, it's coming out in a few weeks, in case you forgot. <laughs> also, Paper Mario. Like, yeah. I don't know. Oh, let's hope so. Yeah. Um, so next up is a game called Town. Uh, so this is like we've mentioned a few games before that are like kind of forgotten. I think this is definitely one that people have probably forgotten or has yep. just completely fallen off the radar. Um, this is from Game Freak. Yeah, y- you may know them from a little-known series called Pokemon. <laughs> it's different uh, from Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Uh, so Town is a um, it's like an RPG that they're making we got a trailer for it i believe last year there wasn't a lot of like gameplay to go off of um i I remember at the time people were speculating or was it a year ago i want to say it was a year ago i don't think it was at e3 i want to say it was at some other direct i thought that we had seen it before we saw let's go i could Mm, be wrong because i remember i remember people theorizing that like town was going to like or the next gen of pokemon would look like town which is very Maybe. obviously did not come true but um regardless pretty excited to see more of that um but colin actually one of the uh, next game on your list next two games on your list are like the two major things that i want to or two of the major things i want to see from nintendo this year um and that is of course the Luigi's mansion 3 I, I think you're so with the next two you're you're the other one is Animal Crossing. Yeah. I feel like you're gonna get one of the two. I don't think you're I don't see Nintendo showing both for right. some reason. Well the thing is they're both supposed to be this year. Yeah, exactly. And same with several other games I feel several. like that's on right. here. They've actually got like quite a few Switch yeah. games. Like it's the first half of this year for Switch, like maybe not a lot of first party stuff. Mm-hmm. But the back half seemingly is stacked yeah i would say so um so uh, you know i guess normally we would say i don't know like i don't know they'd put all this stuff out in a year but like the switch's opening year was also stacked Um, yeah they had a game for basically every month and that probably could work out here as well and i think yeah if we like took the time to actually like do them you know do the math on it like i think there's a very real shot so like you look at super mario maker in june um july Maybe I'm I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Fire Emblem's in July. Ah, uh, I didn't know if that had a date yet. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, I thought see. I saw. So maybe it doesn't. But regardless, Marvel Ultimate Alliance three is in July. Um, Astral yeah, that, Chain that's is in true. August. Yep, yep. Um, 
So then you have September, October. Like, October is totally a Luigi's Mansion 3. September totally could be Animal Crossing. November is Pokemon. Um, December, I don't know, something else. It It is. Wow, you are right. Fire Emblem Three Houses, July 26th. I did not yeah. know that. Huh. Yeah. So, wow, actually, like, <laughs> hold on. Like, I think I'm starting to, like, put it together myself. Mm-hmm. But so yeah. we have Mario Maker in June. We have Fire Emblem and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 in July. Um, this Again, this is just announced. So August is Astral Chain. September, if I were to place bets, I think that's like a great time for Animal Crossing. Uh, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Um, and I say that because in October is a great time for Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah. Um, November, we know it's Pokemon. But also, in addition to Pokemon, November could also be a Link's Awakening. I would say November for Link's Awakening is probably correct. Yeah. Um, so that leaves December. They, Bayonetta they have, 3, of course. Bayonetta 3 in December. Yep. <laughs> oh, got done. Yep, we did it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we have outlined Nintendo's rest of the year calendar, and it's well, awesome. <laughs> mark it down. Great. Yep. Uh, so, no, yeah, like I, Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing, both games that we have gotten essentially cg teasers of yeah um both have been slated for 2019 and both we have heard next to nothing about yeah for a a while um my hope and my dream is that both of these are just blown out at e3 yeah i i would hope so um Mm. I mean, they've got a lot of time they've made up from not having to talk about Smash Brothers as much this year yeah, as last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could see it for sure. Uh, the one thing I will say, so like Animal Crossing, like I'm just excited to see what it is and, and what new things are doing with it and stuff. Like I don't, you don't need to really say much to convince me on that. Um, Luigi's Mansion 3, my one hope. Uh, so Dark Moon, I do, but like I think is an excellent game. Um, but I would like to move away from like the mission structure of Dark Moon. Mm-hmm. Um, have it be like one major mansion or something. I I right. want Luigi's Mansion Three to basically be the first Resident Evil. Yeah, jeez, oh man, <laughs> just just with the... <laughs> Luigi walks down the hall, like corridor and he like sees this like boo like with blood oh, all know, over its face, just like turns yeah. around. Or there's the walking down the hallway and um. And it's uh, it's Poochie from like Yoshi's character verse or whatever, like the d- little dog that you you have in some of the recent Yoshi games, and he just like puffs in out of like puffs through a window. Mm-hmm. Oh man! Do we think Luigi will die in this game and become a ghost <laughs> like he was in that video, the Smash Brothers I don't know. video? He could die Maybe. and be a ghost, and you find your way back to your body. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm yeah I, I don't know I'm I'm very like I I hope I would I I love I would love to see like what I I want to see just what the new things are in Luigi's Mansion like what are some of the new weird mechanics they're coming up with um I I just thought of like the HD Rumble I think it would be really cool with the yeah. vacuum Oh yeah um that'd be really neat For sure um you could feel the ghost like in your Joy-Con mm-hmm. I don't know like it very... just sucked him up very excited for luigi's mansion 3 very excited for animal crossing um next up here on your list we have smash uh next dlc fighter so thus far we've had the piranha plant and we've had joker yep um so yeah and and so we're we're due for four if i remember correctly yep four more so one one or one down three to go or or is it i think oh yeah sorry i mean i think we got four more to go i thought there were five okay. total because oh, piranha be right. plant was the extra dlc so yeah. i think there's four more to okay go. so definitely do for at least one more announced See, fighter i was gonna say do we get is there some weird way that we get two fighters announced i mean maybe i mean it's e3 yeah that's all i gotta say like, yeah why not just blow it out mm-hmm Santa, the e3 bears coming to town he's got two smash fighters for you <laughs> yeah it's um, okay <laughs> So, all right. So let's name some characters. Who we got? Who, who, who's on our list of like? Ouch. Oh, put him in. Put him in the fight. Um, Banjo, obviously, that's a given. Yeah, Master Chief. Master Chief. Steve from Minecraft. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know. Cuphead. I mean, so, so so Cuphead's think, on Switch now. I think that um, one is more likely now than any of the others. I think Cuphead with like a Mugman assist we, trophy or something. Okay, I don't so know. do we have? I mean, obviously there's Persona Five Strikers coming, but for, but Persona Five proper is not on the Switch at least right now, and not announced for it. Right. Do we have any character? Is there any characters like Joker that you wouldn't typically think to be something Nintendo ish? Um, that isn't even on the, I mean, we've named Banjo, I guess, but like, um, that isn't on the Switch that like well, it might be a chance, like maybe a Japanese character. I was just thinking about this one. Is it a weird way that Detective Pikachu could be a character? Oh, man. Um, I mean, like, yeah, uh, like we have Dr. Mario, we've got. Yeah. Um, um yeah because but then he'd just pretty much be an echo fighter maybe to mm. i don't know um but yeah I, was I, also, I don't know what i can think of right now uh, i was also thinking like looking at maybe some of their upcoming games is there something there like maybe a pokemon from pokemon sword and shield yeah maybe um maybe a fire Emblem, like a character from fire emblem three houses we've already got quite a few fire emblem characters but you know maybe um tom nook is there a character from Link's Awakening that may, might fit? The Chain Chomp um, from Link's Awakening? What do you think? Do, do you think it's too outrageous? To, that, that would be great. Um, is it too outrageous to say, hey, Iron Man? Oh, I think so. I think that's, that's like... Is, that's it, like, is a Marvel character too, too far? That's like Goku levels. And I know you got Ultimate Alliance. <laughs> I think it's... I think so. Okay. Um, Agent Coulson joins the fight. Jeez. Agent Coulson versus Snake, one v one, final destination. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, you can't. Man. How cool would it be? How cool would it be for Thanos to be in Smash Brothers? Yeah, we, his final Smash writes itself. Pretty much, yeah. Um. Man, I see. That's the thing. That that's what's so great is that you know they're not gonna go back to an old character because well they already have them all in the game. Like there has yeah, to be a new yeah. character. Yeah. Um. I, I hope it's something out of left field. I hope they don't. Like, I hope they don't continue to do this. So like, um, Piranha Plant was also in, or uh, no, PD Piranha I think was in uh, Mario Tennis Aces. Did you see the new Mario mm. Tennis Aces yeah. character they announced this week? Like fire yeah. piranha plant like i hope they don't do something yeah. like that like oh it's pink gold peach now in mm-hmm. <laughs> in smash brothers um, yeah i hope so as well but i mean the joker gives me hope that or the joker god joker gives me hope that like these whatever the remaining characters are are going to be like pretty wild yeah so I'm, I'm thinking about more of the classic nintendo franchises so like we have the mega man we have belmont now mm-hmm. in there from castlevania yeah, do, that's another we, good place to look. Do we get like a Contra character or something? Um, um, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Is there is there like a Contra character that you think is like by known by name? Yeah, it'd just be like the normal whoever that yeah. main guy is you play as. I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe another Final Fantasy character. Like we've got Cloud. Like Terra might be cool. Noctis. Um, Put Noctis in there. Knocked us in there. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Final Fantasy VII's on the Switch now, right? The yeah, yeah, the PC yeah. port or whatever. Yeah, it is. Like, you think maybe another Final Fantasy VII character? Maybe. Um, what are some other like old school? I mean, Clue Clue Land. Yeah. Load Runner. I don't know. Uh, I, I just feel like, I mean, yeah, I guess we got Piranha Plant. But, but when like, when something gets announced, it's going to be like, oh, right. You know, it's yeah. going to be like that. It's I, it definitely, it's going to be either like, oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Or it's going to be like a Joker level reaction of like, w- are you kidding me right now? Senwa from Hellblade. Mm-hmm. And because oh, it's on be Switch great. now, I don't. Yeah. Is there any? I mean, do we? I mean, we've talked about this in the past, but like, is there a chance that it could be an indie game character? Is there a chance of Shovel Knight? Or, I mean, Shovel Knight's a trophy. It's so a trophy, that's, right? that's the biggest thing, is that if Shovel Knight ends up being a trophy, I don't think 
the only one I can His think chances of chances are probably slim. I would say the only one I can really think of is Cuphead. That's the only one I can think of. Yeah. Um. But yeah. still, putting mm. Cuphead in that style of Smash Brothers might be pretty hard, because like that's yeah. like making it like a three dimensional kind of character. Um. Hmm. It'd be difficult. Hmm. Yeah, I I don't I'm I'm just trying to think of I think I think for sure we're at least getting we're at least getting one more like character announcement. I would I would like to think two. Two would I be mean, cool. Yeah, I mean you, you usually you you probably announce one and then right when the other and one gets released, maybe, you put you release the next one who's coming. Maybe we get maybe we get two, but there are two characters that are like connected. Maybe there are two that are from the same franchise or something. Um I don't know who that would be necessarily, but like maybe they announce both of them together because they're both from the same game. Yeah, it's like yeah, I just oh now I'm just going back to that like they're gonna announce Cat Mario as the new fighter, mm. like you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Um, or um, what's his name? Gino from Mario Legend Seven. Yeah. Le- Legend of the Seven Stars. Birdo is now. Birdo. Wart is now a fighter. Yeah. Oh man, Mario Land or whatever that game was. That was Mario Mario the, Two, I think. That was Mario Two. Um, Wart. The 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 paddle from Breakout breaks into the. I know that I was thinking crowd. about. I was thinking about <laughs> Tetris. They're gonna yeah. put a Tetris block. <laughs> whatever. Um, ninety nine. It's a Tetris ninety nine stage. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Well, anyways, so we'll find out when we find out. Um, yeah. So we talked about Pokemon, Pokemon Sword and Shield, um, Bayonetta three. So th- this is like a. I I don't know if I'm really like in the phase of like oh this game's in trouble because I don't think it is. I think it was just announced when it started. Yeah, I I agree with that because it it was kind of to coincide with the one and two, release mm-hmm. on Switch. Yeah, yeah, it was a very like it definitely, in retrospect, reeks of like oh it was. <laughs> they they hadn't even put a pen to the paper on this did they it was just right. like oh by the way we're gonna do this one too yeah um so bayonetta 3 i don't i don't i unless you like do you think it's gonna be there or I'm i kind of put, don't expect I'm it to put two percent chance okay i don't know just very then i'll low. put three percent okay you took the high one <laughs> for bayonetta three yeah sounds good um great so Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, we've as we've established, this game is apparently out in a month and a half. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I'm excited for it. I imagine we'll probably get like a a decent like we've gotten a few um, like video overviews and past Nintendo directs for the game. Probably just get one last like push of like, hey, this is this is what this game is. Be excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I agree. Yep. Yep. And then uh, and we got we got the big one. So Link's Awakening remake announced earlier this year during yeah. the Nintendo Direct um what what more can we do what like what more can they do for us Colin what what do you need to see from Link's Awakening to to get you pumped if you aren't already um amiibo mm-hmm. um i don't know i feel like that's going to be a thing maybe yeah um yeah, I, and, and maybe just some other, something other than just being, hey, we're just remaking it one to one. Here you go. Maybe like a different mode or um, some kind of other different gameplay style that sure you know maybe was on the cutting room floor back on Game Boy, but hey, now we mm-hmm. we can do this. Um, yeah, I'd like to see, um, and we're, we almost certainly see it being demoed throughout, on Treehouse Live throughout the week. Oh, um, yeah, but I would definitely sure. like to see like a pretty close examination of like, hey, so we're remaking this game. What does that mean? Um, yeah. I think we've talked about it in the past. It's like if you played it on Game Boy, it, you had the D pad and two buttons, and so you had to go into the pause menu to switch out your inventory like different equipment and tools that you had you had to do that all the time because the map was designed around you using those tools to traverse it right and so like it kind of is pretty tedious playing it on the game boy um to be honest or like even just just playing the game boy version like Mm -hmm. i played it on 3ds and it was pretty tedious to like have to do that all the time 
So what does a remake mean? A remake means that you don't have to do that. A remake means that the control system could be a lot better, um, that it can be yeah. improved. Uh, but what else does a remake mean? Like kind of what you were alluding to. Like are there are there things that you cut before that you can that you can put back in? Are there new um, are there new abilities? Are there new dungeons even? Is there something? What what new things are you going to be adding to it um, to help kind of differentiate it itself? I, I don't know what and that would exciting. be really. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really either. know the moment. Yeah. Um, 3D Rumble. 3D Rumble. Whoa. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. VR mode. Whatever the, yeah, VR. what game on this list is getting a VR mode from oh, Labo? Yeah. <laughs> Luigi's yeah. Mansion 3, for sure. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Animal Crossing, you do VR of your house, the inside of your house. Um, Pokemon Sword and Shield would be VR, and you could view like the Pokemon models damon x machina you uh are in the pilot seat of the mech <laughs> yeah I, I don't yep. know anyways anyways uh yeah, so I don't, yeah, I, Link's awakening yeah i don't really know what else for for that um show me more i guess yeah i'm i don't even need to i don't even need to see just yeah give for it to sure me now just like yeah. just really shadow drop it mm-hmm. which by the way so we don't have it listed on here um but Colin, I think the perfect shadow drop is like, like just sitting right before us. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. And so I'm moving to the beat of of that music you just dropped there because it makes perfect sense to me for Cadence of High Roll to release. Oh, okay. Next Tuesday. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, I I was I, I kind of walked right into that when I wasn't under wasn't yep. really thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. So there's uh, prediction number four or five or something yeah, across something. these two episodes for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, Cadence of Hyrule was announced a few months ago, teased for a spring release. Um, there was like a, a short bit for like a couple of days this past week that people speculated that it might be releasing on like the 31st of May. Um, that did not happen. I got a trailer that was like, hey, it's coming out in June. Um, seems weird to me that they wouldn't give a date <laughs> if it's next month or this month um so either we're, we're either getting a release date at e3 or they're just gonna straight up shadow drop it after right. their um e3 direct yeah. which would be awesome that'd be great yep uh so anyways let's move on to the the back half of this list here so marvel ultimate alliance 3 um again that's next month i've i don't know if you dug into much of the game informer like videos and not much um, I, I don't really have much to say about it i'm not really all that interested okay. i guess um okay. yeah i'm i don't know yeah i don't know what i expect like i'm i'm down and like i'm, I'm excited to play it um but i don't know if i expect it to be like really good i guess i don't know like I, i'm kind of i wouldn't be surprised if it came out and got like straight sevens yeah i'm thinking about like yeah seven seven five yeah um that said i'm still excited like i'm, I'm definitely gonna play it uh so next up damon x machina um does this game have a release date i don't know know. um let me see because they so this was a game that actually opened their e3 show last year yeah uh, if you remember that um and then it looks like it's still just 2019 okay because yeah we got like a beta or like some test missions or something like that um but yeah um you would have to think they'd probably show something pretty quick on this um yeah i would think so yeah but i i haven't i still have that demo thing like downloaded on my switch so i need to play it (laughs) it it didn't really yeah i don't i don't think i ever downloaded it yeah it says summer is is also what it says 2019 so i mean we totally get a release date for that i wouldn't be surprised at all that's it um so Astral Chain is next on the list. We know that's out in August. Um, we've only had the one trailer, so I definitely, like, I think for this, I'm really excited to see some Treehouse streams um, and just see some straight gameplay and right. and them talking about, like, what the different systems and mechanics are for the game. Right. Um, um, I would love yeah. to hear, uh, really quick, I would love to just hear from Platinum 
and have hear what they have to say about this game. Yeah, I'm sure we're. What is like a chance we get a demo for that Shadow Drop? Oh, that'd be great. I I, it's it's something we haven't we haven't talked about and uh, throughout both of these podcasts up until like the last five minutes. But I'm totally looking forward to the Shadow Drops. We always okay. get a few each year. Um, I'm excited to see who does it. Like, what is it going to be? Um, for some reason, it's always fun to like sit here and be and, like during a press conference and like and go, "All right, what do I get to spend money on today? Like, what, right. <laughs> what am I, what am I doing?" Um, right. I always remember uh, the the E3 where I was at the the movie theater and like Entwined was announced or something. Oh, sure. And it was released the day, and I was like, "Oh, right, I got like I bought it on the phone, had it downloaded as I was driving back." Yeah, I love stuff like that, man. Oh. It's so fun, cool. and it's a great way to get people to buy a game that they wouldn't normally buy. Uh-huh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, I hear you. Cool. So you wrote, you wrote, you wrote God, uh, you wrote it's late. Witcher 3 down. It yeah. Is, um, I think there were some rumors about this recently, actually. Yeah, so um, a Chinese uh, ad uh, that was, I don't remember, like, you know, I don't think they say what it was specifically, but it was an, an ad, and there's screenshots and everything of the Witcher 3 in Switch packaging, like, kind of box art, and mm-hmm. so it could be like, oh, well, you know, that could be just a placeholder thing, um, but then there's, like, accessories on this ad that you can buy, like, skins of, like, Witcher oh. 3 stuff, so, like, your Joy-Con covers and your Switch cover, like the uh, dock cover, like has like Witcher Three stuff on it. Um, so I, I feel like that could be a game that yeah makes that, its way over. That definitely like is either an elaborate fake or yeah, I, pretty, I'm not sure. It'd be pretty wild. Like I could totally see that being like if they wanted to like get a a major third party release on their system, like sure why not and i think that I makes wonder, for an e3 announcement like oh we got the witcher 3 wasn't witcher 3 cross-gen or am i misremembering that no it was it was only ps4 xbox was one. it okay yeah because i was i mean i guess it's early enough like I, I i wonder how it would run would be my thing or like what it would look like like who's yeah. doing the port well if you get um what's their names on it panic button i'm sure they'll yeah apparently do good <laughs> on it They've been getting a lot of work recently. Mm-hmm. If you've seen a lot of the stuff they've been doing, it's cool. And I guess like I don't, I don't really have much speculation to add, but I do think that at least brings up a good point of you know expectations of how many, if so, who or like what games that are like third party releases does Nintendo get to have like surprise like hey it's coming to Switch too, um, or hey we're getting this ported over to Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we've had Mortal Kombat recently. Uh, I think release day and date, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I do wonder, like, how many of those are we going to get? I don't really have anything to speculate on. Um, I just, it's something I'm wondering. Well, we are getting Doom Eternal. Yeah. Supposedly day and date. So. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, last bit of here. So there's some, like, uh, so you were like Super Mario stuff. Party, yeah, miscellaneous stuff like Super Mario Party DLC. Yeah, the only um, the only reason I put that on there is I guess like Nintendo has said multiple times that N- Super Mario Party is a game they want to continually update and yeah. put new content out for it, but they haven't put anything out for it. Um, so and they yeah, announced so it at <laughs> last E3, so maybe I have mm-hmm. no idea. Um, I just threw it on there. And, and the game definitely kind of came and went, so I don't mm-hmm. know if things changed, but, like, yeah, totally could announce something, like, really quick. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even need to take up that much time. Yeah. Um, so, new Wii U ports, uh, I think, I don't know about you, uh, I think I'm at the point now where, for Wii U ports, I, I still want to play Super Mario 3D World, because I did never play that, and yeah. I really love 3D Land. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, I'm... I'm kind of struggling to to think of any other Wii U games that like I haven't that I would like to have ported because I never played them. I think Pikmin three was still a rumor. Okay. Um, from a few months but ago. It, but I guess at this point, I would rather just have a Pikmin four. I agree. Yeah. Um, I don't. I still feel like it's yeah. it's just not gonna stop though. I feel like they're gonna take yeah. that. They're gonna find something else to port over. For sure. Um, yeah. For sure. 
Um, so new amiibos. That seems. It, does it? I, I feel like they've slowed down on amiibos. Perhaps I I'm think wrong. so. Yeah, I think um, so too. But they they did just a whole nother run again of um, Smash Brothers line of amiibos. Um, yeah, from like that's true. Kind of some of the old rare ones. I think they said all the DLC fighters are getting them. So like Joker's gonna get one. Um, I would love a Luigi's Mansion amiibo where he's got oh, like the sure. the uh, the vacuum pack on his back. Um, so I don't know if you saw this on news from Super Mario Maker Two, but that actually got announced saying that there are no there's no amiibo support uh, in oh, that game. Yeah, so like there's no amiibo stuff. So I I think that might be kind of like a big hit to amiibos, I guess in a sense. Yeah. Um, I'm still yeah, waiting I, for. I, I'm still waiting for Snake announced for mm-hmm. Amiibo. It hasn't gotten announced yet. Um, still right. waiting. Maybe, maybe here the next series gets announced. Yeah, I guess if nothing else, probably much more of just like Smash focus because they, again, as you said, like they said every character was getting one. Yeah. So. Yeah. For sure. Um, so we already talked about maybe 3DS games being announced during Treehouse. Uh, so the last few. <laughs> um, so Metroid Prime 4 is almost assuredly not going to be at E3 this year. I'd agree. <laughs> I think it's a pretty safe bet. However, I'd say so. However, um, I mean, this this would be great. Is uh, There's been long-running rumors for a while now of Metroid Prime Trilogy coming to the Switch. Um, I, one of the rumors even was that it was done and ready to go. Yeah. And that they were just waiting for the right time to release it. Um, I would... And to, and even to then we've out, we've outlined what the rest of their year looks like, and you could maybe even make an argument that like, hey, push it back, because mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if the argument was to wait till it's closer to Metroid Prime Four, then like, hey, we've got a ways to go. Yeah. Um, that said, I like. So I would I would love to see the trilogy like the trilogy ported over. So Curtis, if something is done, when's the best time to release it? Never apparently. Okay, I I think I think this could be shadow dropped. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, I I think this I think this could be. Um, that'd be fantastic. We'll see. Um, have you played? So I I bought the trilogy actually on, I think it was on the Wii U, but I think it was like through the Wii shop. Yeah, they just put it. Yeah, they just ported the Wii version over. Yeah. Um, have you played? All three of them, any of them, the first yep. one. I've played all three. Um, okay. I played even the first two on GameCube. Then I played three on Trilogy. Um, then I went back and even played one and two again on the Wii on the Wii Trilogy. So yeah, I've played I've played all of them multiple okay. times. Nice. So I bought the Trilogy. I played the first one. I've not played the other two. Um, so hey, please put that out. Yeah, two. I would like to. I would like to play those other two, ones. Um, two is a little weird. Um, I really the, like two. The original Metroid Prime is a masterpiece. Yeah, it. So this yeah. is the weird thing, though. I I would say my ranking of them would be three, two, one. Interesting. I I really do. Corruption is a little bit more linear in a sense. You don't do mm-hmm. as much backtracking and equipping different items. Uh, but I would say Corruption's probably my favorite, and then I still probably like Echoes more than the original. So I'd probably it, it's not to say one's nice. not great at all, but yeah. um, I would say three, two, one's probably my ranking of them. Cool. Um, I'm yeah. I'm. I think that is a that's that would be a great shadow drop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. would be fantastic. Yeah. Um. So next, of course, I think um, the next game on our list is a sure like it's a hundred percent going to. Yeah, be the next shadow drop. Course. The next shadow drop, of course. Like actually, it will be shadow drop the night before. Will Reggie reveal himself for this? <laughs> um, is it is it time to stop talking about Mother Three? It's is never it no. I mean, okay, it, it's going to go as long as like are they going to announce? Like we've got Shen, we're going to get Shenmue Three. We're going to get Final Fantasy Seven Remake. We've basically got Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen. Uh. <laughs> what else is there man yeah like you know what i mean it's it's gonna happen at some point i i um, like to think so too yeah i don't think i well i don't know i was really like i, I think back to that year that they put earthbound beginnings out mm-hmm. on the wii u and after that i really like i really thought 
they would not just do this. They would yeah. not just do this if they weren't planning something for Mother 3. I agree. But man, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, it has. It's been it's been a few years since then. Yeah. It's um, even uh yeah, it was like 2014, 15, 20, 2014, like 2015, yeah. Yeah. And in that time, <laughs> um they know. They're obviously aware of it. They've made jokes about it in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, at some point, I don't know. Like, I, I do think one day it probably would happen. Yeah. Um, I just don't know when. Yeah. I mean, it's just Mother 3 and uh, Agent and Half-Life 3. Those are the yeah. the holy That's trilogy it. of uh, where they at we're, games. We've got, every, we've got everything else now. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I just kind of threw that on there yeah. as a, you know, uh, but, um, so the, the next two are fun. Um, there's a rumor, I think earlier in the year that, uh, in conjunction with the whole Microsoft Nintendo stuff that perhaps Nintendo was working with platinum to revive Scalebound. Um, I actually like for a bit there kind of bought into that rumor. Um, but I think recently I actually saw some people coming out pretty, overtly just stating like that's not it was not true but it's yeah not I, I i could probably believe that yeah um i guess we'll see only time will tell what happens first mother three or scalebound i don't know <laughs> um but the, the next thing we have i think is the more interesting uh talking point which is is there going to be any microsoft chatter here uh i'm gonna s- it's just the thing is is the is the talk going to be at Microsoft about Nintendo yeah. or is the talk going to be at Nintendo about Microsoft? So I was I was going to say that I think it's far more likely that we would hear Phil Spencer on stage talking about how much they love Nintendo. I agree. Rather than a Nintendo Direct having a segment where they talked about their great partnership with Microsoft. I Unless agree. the only thing I could think of that might change that is if they if one or two things happen one is if there is a part of the direct where they announce they talk about cuphead and how there's dlc coming for cuphead and they make a mention about how they've been really happy working with microsoft or if they announce ori yeah for the switch um like if there if there's actually like a game that they announced during the direct um i think that's the only I, i think that's the only thing that would spur a mention of Microsoft. I don't think that they would just be like, "Oh, we've been working with Microsoft, and that's great." I think it would be like a indie game, like Ori, or or Cuphead, like announcing that the DLC is coming to Switch on this day, or um, I don't know, like Battletoads. Oh yeah, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about. I don't know why I was not even thinking about that. Huh. That's a good point. That totally makes sense, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Why not? Um, Battles, I mean, and, and, and what's great about it is, um, I don't remember the names of each Battletoad character. I mean, it's, uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Rash, Pimple, and Zitz, I think, are the names. Okay, so Zitz is definitely the Smash Brothers character. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. How about just the battle toads and then just or, the or three it, characters? That, that, see, that would be kind of cool too, right? Because we've got the ice climbers. It would be yeah. if we just had the battle toads. Mm-hmm. I'm down. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? Rash. Into that? <laughs> Pimple. It's like the smash announcer <laughs> saying that. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, I was not. I don't know why I was not even thinking about that. That's I'm great. I'm so glad that we actually finally discovered what the new Smash characters are going to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm glad. Finally, I'm about glad we... time. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see their. I'm just, uh, just going to be disappointed now if it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Well, what their final Smash would be? They just like run their little bikes from that. It, first it writes NES itself. Game. It yeah. writes itself. Same yeah. with the Thanos thing. It just like you know instantly what it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna be laughing about that like all week now. Great. Just this, <laughs> just the smash, smash, <laughs> smash announcer tries to say their names. Yeah. Oh man. 
Um, well, g- good good show. Um, so yeah. before we before we wrap up, E three twenty nineteen is less than a week away, or the the press conferences are less than a week away. Yep. We've spent the better part of six hours yep. over the past couple week and a half, um, chatting about what we're expecting to see. Uh, pretty soon we're gonna cover all of it. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna step by step go through all the announcements, all the fun, the laughs, the the tears. The cringes. The, dis- the disappointments, the cringes, and the amiibos. Um, before we wrap up, we've talked about the major press conferences, the streams, um, the people, the places, the things. Colin, what one thing that we have not talked about at E3? Uh, what's something, or even something we've talked about, what's one thing that... That, like that's the one thing for you at E3. Like you can see that, and nothing else matters. Oh man, um, I always still yearn for another Bioshock. We talked about it a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Man, I'm not really sure. I, I I would almost say Halo Infinite is probably up there for me. Okay. Um, I, I still have really big kind of. I just really like Halo um, stuff. So. I would say that, or of course, the one we haven't really talked about was the Devolver press conference. Um, yeah. Of course, you know, just can't wait for the announcements of loot box <laughs> coin and whatever other things they'll announce. Um, but I don't know. What, what about you? Um, so the, I, I think I've definitely hinted at a few things. I think the obvious thing for me is just is, is having uh, Final Fantasy VII like, just be a thing have it exist and be able to see what this game is and learn more information about it because it's been years now of just wondering like what what are they doing here like what is part one what how many parts when like who where why like all the different like i want and i want to finally have answers to a lot of questions that like has been on many people's minds for the past the better part of three years now or four years even god yeah that's uh, unbelievable it's been a while Um, so that for sure is like probably the, the top of my head, my mind. I think the other thing for me is um, a curiosity of the unknown. So a curiosity of what kinds of next gen teases might we get? What kinds of things might we might we learn over the next week and a half? Yeah. Um, Microsoft and, next gen. That's yeah. Yeah. That's um yeah for sure. For sure. Um, and then finally, I and I think the thing that we come to E three for every year is um the unknowables the surprises the things that we could never predict or speculate on in any of these prediction shows uh the things that we will never know until it's just there in front of us yeah um the things like the the original watchdogs reveal like the moments like that where you just go oh my god what what am i even watching right now yeah um so that's what i'm excited about um I am excited for Square Enix to like hopefully not supremely disappoint me in every way, shape, and form. Uh, and I'm also excited for Luigi to finally have um, his own game for the sequel to Year of Luigi. So yeah, I I think I just still feel like out of the the six that we've talked about, I I just still feel Square Enix is the biggest question mark. That it's are. like, how much are we overhyping what they're going to show? Or are they taking that primetime slot thinking, oh, wow, like they actually are going to come back with something? Um, yeah. Yeah, I- I'm not sure. I'm not sure either, because honestly, I used similar logic last year and look what it got me. So yeah, it got you the quiet man. <laughs> it got me the quiet man. Yeah. Um, that said, I am also uh, interested. We haven't talked, we didn't talk about it really too much. Um, I'm curious to know what this like Darksiders project is. Um, yeah. I was extremely disappointed in Darksiders three, and I continue to be disappointed by a series <laughs> that had so much promise. Yeah. <laughs> that had so much promise. Um, so I'm curious to see what they do with that. And um, with that said, Colin, I think that's it. I think at this point, all we have to do now is just to wait. Is to be is to be the quiet man. That's. <laughs> I think that's the lesson we need to learn, actually. Is... Uh, maybe that's the whole world needs to... Wait, what? Uh... <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this has been... I always look forward to this. Um, yeah. it, it goes on for quite a while, but we, we talk a lot about some cool things. 
Um, we do, and um, I'm excited to have uh, many more discussions about things that are real and that we have seen and that we can have some more thoughts on. Um, but until then, uh, thank you, everyone. If you listen to these, especially both of them, I know they were quite long. Yeah. Uh, share your predictions, thoughts, expectations um, with us, either on Twitter or in the comments. Um, Colin, we will be back. I think we're going to, I think we'll probably after this go back to our usual two week rotation. Right. Um, probably figure out what kind of like schedule we have throughout the week next week. But, uh, if nothing else, I think the weekend after E3 will probably worst yeah. case scenario. That'll be when we record our thoughts and impressions and things about how E3 went. Um, yeah, I'd agree. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably be on the, the same schedule we were before. Uh, but until then, Colin, thanks for joining me. You are very welcome. And, and to all of those listening, may all of your dreams come true.